And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to SNU Football Stadium for today's home finale for the Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm 2018 campaign. It is homecoming, and it is senior day as well. So a full slate of festivities on hand today for the Crimson Storm as they take on uh, southwestern Oklahoma State today. Kickoff at about 30 minutes away. Uh, but for now, we will turn it over to the PA announcer for today's Senior Day festivities as they are on the field and getting ready to be recognized with uh, Coach Andy Lambert. Thank you. 
and welcome back to Southern Nazarene Football Stadium here in Bethany, Oklahoma. The festivities, pregame festivities are over and we are uh, just about set for kickoff between SNU and Southwestern Oklahoma State University here uh, in Bethany, about 15 minutes to go before kickoff. Uh, I'm Luke McConnell, uh, your play-by-play -play voice, and Landry Franks joins me in the booth. Uh, just re to recap where we are here, uh, coming into this one, SNU comes into this one two and seven this season, two and seven in conference play, while Swasu three and six, three and six in conference play. Uh, the Crimson Storm coming off a dramatic win last week on the road against Northwestern Oklahoma State, trailing in the fourth quarter. Uh, by two scores, they came back to tie the score and then eventually won the game in double overtime. Um, and just a terrific comeback, especially after the uh, the struggles that the Crimson Storm have been through this year, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Just a really positive showing and a good sign that you know the the morale and the um, attitude in the locker room still on a positive note here for the Crimson Storm. And the Crimson Storm, you know, were rewarded from the Great American Conference. First time the Great American Conference has awarded all three Player of the Week awards to SNU. Gage Porter uh, took home Offensive Player of the Week. Dorian Harris took home Defensive Player of the Week. And Carlos Aguiano was the Special Teams Player of the Week. So a clean sweep for the Crimson Storm in the Conference Player of the Week honors. Again, the first time that's ever happened uh, for the Crimson Storm. Swasu coming into this game off a loss uh, to Oklahoma Baptist last week, but nearly had a dramatic comeback of their own, trailing 41-17 to in the fourth quarter. Uh, Swasu did score 22 points, but the comeback fell just short as they lost 47-39. to So bring Landry in here. Landry, uh, you know, looking at the schedule, you know, we knew that the end of the season would be a little bit more of um, – your winnable games, and yet here SNU stands with a win today and a win next week on the road against Oklahoma Baptist. The Crimson Storm end up with the same record as they did last year at four and seven, even though the visually it has looked much much worse than the campaign last year. Yeah, and I think uh, maybe some of that was due to the wins were it seemed like they were a little more spread out last year, and when you lose so many in a row like SNU has. It can be heartbreaking, but um, I know that you win the last two games. Y you finish with the record that you hoped would probably would have been a little bit better. But for recruiting and for uh, morale for next season, uh, ending the season right can be uh, can can be the equivalent to a bowl game in so in some regards. You know, it can be a real boost to your team, uh, especially uh, when you need it. So. Um, Definitely a, a positive outlook after a really kind of a nail-biter game last week. And the Crimson Storm have been uh, buoyed offensively by quarterback Gage Porter, who has uh, begun to settle in and is starting to make more plays, starting to be smarter with the football, starting to really get a flow of the offense and uh, really take command of that unit. And we saw it last week when he threw for 285 yards and added um, another good chunk of yardage on the ground as well. In the win, uh, he was really the catalyst for that. And how, uh, what have you seen from Porter these past couple weeks? Yeah, there's a few things. One, uh, Gage seems comfortable in the pocket, something that uh, in the last probably three or four games, uh, it's it's just the lack of time he spent in the pocket, which sounds which sounds crazy, but uh, you have to get used to the people around you. And practice doesn't always simulate what a real game pocket feels like. So the the pass pro you might see in practice gives you all the time in the world oftentimes um, or all the time to run. Um, but then in a game, the timing is off, and that can throw off the whole game, um, especially for especially for a quarterback. So he, he looks comfortable back there. And secondly, they, they've also changed uh, a few of the plays of the offense to make it easier on him. Um, so things that work for Spady um, are not always the same that work for Porter. Um, so last week, and this might be the nature because they were down, but there was a lot more pass pro last week, just general pass pro, which from SNU, they like play action. They like to give as many options as they can. Um, so you don't always see general pass pro, um, but I think that helps a young quarterback just just focus on 
uh, his his reads and his routes that he needs to make. Um, and then he just he's delivering the easy pass, and he's delivering it um, in rhythm, in timing. And like we've said all year, Luke, SNU's offense thrives on rhythm. And in the mm-hmm. third and fourth quarter last week, they were in a rhythm, and there wasn't anything uh, Northwestern could do to slow them down. I mean, they were – they were going to score a touchdown, and, and that was it. So um, I think uh, if they can keep that rhythm going, if he can continue to find those easy passes and not have to overthink as a young quarterback, they're going to have a, a, a successful day. And another great opportunity for SNU to continue uh, the trend as far as offensive production goes. Uh, Swasu ranks at or near the bottom of most defensive categories in the conference. Um, but one of the bigger matchups today is going to be the Swasu uh, passing attack led by quarterback Casey Freeman against the SNU passing defense. Swasu comes into the game averaging 242 yards through the air. That's good for fourth in the conference, 49th in the country, while SNU uh, has hung their hat on their passing defense all season long. Third in the conference, 15th in the country, just averaging 161 yards per game through the air. So the secondary for SNU has been uh, just really uh, the strong point, uh, really, of the whole team as far as consistency goes. And they are – you've got a great – piece of news earlier this week with safety Josh Jordan winning his appeal on the targeting call that got him ejected late in the second half against Northwestern so he will be able to play the entire game and not have to sit out the first half Uh, so what what is it about the secondary that's just been so good and so consistent this year yeah well not a lot of people have been hurt or out and when uh, Josh Jordan did go out uh, Northwestern and they were kind of doing an all game they were just hitting the seams right they were just running a verticals or a smash concept and uh, trying to hit the seams as often as they can with big tall wide receivers and for the most part it was open especially when a consistent player like Josh Jordan is out then those seams are really really going to open up uh, but they've been they've been so consistent I think a lot of it is because they've played together so long they've played together with consistency they trust each other and in the secondary uh, when you watch in a football game you're not thinking that these players need to trust each other but but so often a corner will will try to bite down on a play because he he doesn't trust his safety or he'll bust in coverage because he doesn't trust the guy next to him but when you know the guy next to you is going to make a play uh, you're going to you're going to stay in your zone or you're going to stay with your man and not try to do too much um, so I, th- I think uh, even though that's a it's a heavy passing offense by uh, southwestern it's it's nothing that snu hasn't seen in mm-hmm. fact you know I, I think it's funny football is so often people are trying to find the next best thing, but everyone is doing the same thing. Uh, and uh, no doubt SNU has played a lot of offenses that have, have passed the ball really well and have done really well all season. I think we should be keying in maybe uh, how SNU does on the run uh, this week. But, but definitely some opportunities for big plays, especially with Josh Jordan back. Absolutely. And uh, just a couple other notes as far as injuries are concerned for SNU. Uh, Reed Roloffs was out for the rest of the season at wide receiver. Uh, leg injury suffered last week against Northwestern Oklahoma State. So Vance Hooper uh, will be stepping up into uh, that wide receiver role and will get a lot of playing time and a lot of focus for uh, the SNU offense. A lot of good things about Vance Hooper as far as his speed goes. He's, uh, you know, like, like Porter, has been growing into the offense this season, and so he'll be counted on in a big way this year. Uh, along the offensive line, Last week, Mark Henderson got the start at right tackle uh, with Sam Perkins suffering uh, the season-ending injury a couple weeks back against Monticello. We're a little unsure of what the offensive line makeup will look like coming out. It looked like Henderson was working with the first team in warm-ups earlier with Hunter Jones at center, uh, but we'll have to just watch and see how that goes. Um, you know, and later is, the, is just the time of year where attrition starts to take its toll in different different uh on different units and you know really overall uh for SNU they've been they've been pretty fortunate particularly on defense like you mentioned um but the offense definitely has borne the brunt of the injuries this year they have to go somewhere right and yeah and and I sound like a broken record a little bit but when you run a rhythm offense you want you want rhythm everywhere Mm -hmm. and when you when you have an injury it disrupts rhythm when you have to change someone's position especially on the offensive line disrupts rhythm like we saw with Monticello there were some line changes and you could tell it was not as smooth as what SNU would have liked um, but definitely you know even in the win uh, uh, 
uh, last Saturday against Northwestern, uh, the rhythm was there, and they were able to run the ball effectively. Even even though they were passing heavy because they were down, they were still able to run the ball. The holes were there, and you could tell that uh, there was there was quite a bit of trust on that front line. So I'll be interested to see kind of how they mesh again this week with what seems like some more changes. Absolutely, and just to run through today's matchups in the Great American Conference, just an update on the standings here. Uh, it's really Wachita and Southern Arkansas, uh, and then everyone else. Harding does stand in third at this point at seven and two, uh, but the uh, the Bisons have already lost to Wachita and Southern Arkansas. So barring you know some major upsets along the way, there's there's no chance for Harding to grab the conference crown. Wachita and Southern Arkansas do play today. They kick off just a few minutes after we will here in Bethany. And that game is in Arkadelphia, so a fantastic matchup between the number 28 Southern Arkansas Mule Riders um, and number four Washita. Uh, running through the rest of the schedule today, Monticello is at Henderson State. Southeastern Oklahoma State is at Harding. Those are two o'clock kickoffs. East Central is at Arkansas Tech, and Northwestern is at Oklahoma Baptist. Those also are two o'clock kickoffs. Uh, so Landry, going back to um, you know, what we talked about right at the beginning to finish the record with the same record as last year. Uh, what would that mean for this program that uh, is still kind of in a little bit of transition under Coach Andy Lambert? And, um, you know, to me, I think it'd be a sign that your know, progress is happening yeah. regardless of what it looks like on the field. Yeah, and, you know, we have, uh, as, as just general spectators, oftentimes we have such a small scope of what's happened in a program um, and if you just think a few years ago, there was there was a, a moment where SNU hadn't won a division a division uh, two game yet, you know. So there's mm. uh, you have to remember that. And going f uh, with two four win seasons is a big deal. Um, now I know <laughs> that uh, the head ball coach he's not going to want to agree with that, right? He's going to want mm. more than four wins. Uh, he's going to expect higher things, and I know the players do too. Uh, but I definitely think momentum continues when you continue to uh, to build on a program. Po to, to, to change a program, it takes time and it takes uh, seeing the long haul of what could happen. So, As the Crimson Storm take the field, we are uh, just about set for kickoff. And uh, Landry, as we count down these last couple minutes before uh, we get started here, uh, what are a couple things you're looking for today uh, on both sides of the ball for SNU? Yeah, SNU did uh, some really, really creative stuff with, um, with really uh, the most creative thing I saw was uh, uh, their counter. They would bring out of their diamond package, which has three running backs, one quarterback. They would sneak one of those uh, running backs as a pooler in the counter play for the quarterback, and then he would sneak out um, right. Uh, it was actually one of them was for a touchdown. Um, and they would just sneak him out as if he was going to block, and then they just run a play-action pass to him. So I'd imagine uh, finding opportunities more like that to, the, to confuse the defense, to make sure they get lost, and to spring guys like Nate Walker open, to use their speed, and to get them in a creative way, maybe, maybe then differently than what we've seen with just jet sweeps or uh, outside runs. Um, Luke, I, I'm interested, what, what do you think defensively they have to do today to slow down this uh, passing attack from Southwestern? Well, I think, you know, stick to stick to what you're comfortable with. Uh, the, you know, the pa this year we've seen them uh, face off a lot, like you said, face off against a lot of good passing attacks, uh, you know, with Henderson State and uh, t amongst others. Uh, and really they've, they've limited them. You know, you don't, you know, average 161 yards passing for the year and, you know, having given up a lot of passing yards to multiple teams. Mm -hmm. So uh, Freeman, uh, Casey Freeman for Swasu does pose a challenge uh, with this offense. But I think, you know, d doing what you've been doing all year is what has worked. And I think we'll see a lot more of that. SNU will be kicking off. They are going to be kicking off right to left on your screen there. It is a very windy day today here in Bethany. The Flags on the goalpost sticking nearly straight out. Uh, we saw Carlos Aguiano warming up earlier uh, in pregame, and he was drilling some 54, 55-yard field goals. So moving from the south to north. So it is a very brisk southerly breeze today. 
A uh, little chilly for those in the stands. Lots of blankets and hoodies up in the stands today, but a great crowd on hand for Senior Day. It is also homecoming here at SNU. So just all the festivities happening here on the home finale for this one. So Aguiano tees it up and we will be set to go. Jared Rayburn back deep for Swasu as Aguiano the run up and the boot. And that will fly through the end zone. And Swasu will take over after the touchback. So just a, another example of the wind is really whipping here. Yeah. That went all the way through the end zone. Yeah, I was looking at Swasu's return formation, and it really looks like they have four guys deep. There's kind of some pockets on the side. And my first thought was, man, they could just do a high pooch and land it right there. But then, then you think about the wind, and you're like, you know what, just kick it out of the end zone, make sure. So. So Casey Freeman, the junior from Newcastle, comes out to lead the Swasu offense. Jaden Knowles, freshman from Kennedale, is the running back. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left for Swasu. Option look to the left, or to the right, late pitch. As Freeman was belted by Dylan Metter, Knowles did manage to hold on to it, but it will be for no gain. Great pursuit there from the SNU defense. Yes, and that's one of those plays that Swasu will run to try to confuse the defense. Option makes you stay disciplined, makes you choose. Uh, you know, if you're the inside linebacker, you take the quarterback. Outside takes the running back, and SNU fitted it perfectly. Second and ten. Fake handoff to Knowles. Pass up the seam, looking for number 12 there for that's Kevin Fox, and the ball hits. D uh, D Daniel Flynn in the back and falls incomplete. So bring up, brings up third down and 10 for Swasu. And no surprise there, uh, Swasu going for the seams, which were wide open last game, early Absolutely. on in this game. Two wide receivers to either side on a big third down early here for SNU. Freeman looking right, throws it right down the sideline, and it is bobbled and oh. intercepted on the ground by Ja'Kael Davis. What a great play by Davis. He and Eddie Thomas were battling for the ball, and Jaquel Davis ended wow. up on his back and had the ball fall right into his lap for the first turnover of the game for the Crimson Storm. Shades of Nebraska OU in the uh, early 2000s, Agreed. right? Agreed. Oh, man. Andre Wolfolk right I, there. <laughs> I think that ball touched every part of each uh, each player's body right there. That was that was pretty incredible. And terrific coverage from Davis along the sideline. There was nowhere for Freeman to fit that ball in. So SNU will take over first and 10 at their own 47 yard line. Come out with four wide receivers, two to each side and Daniel Ramos the senior in the backfield with Gage Porter. Porter looking Left, he's got Devin Brady, sheds a tackle and is pushed out of bounds at the 41 yard line of Swasu. That's number 52, Garrett Kilpatrick, the redshirt freshman from UConn on the stop. But a big pickup on the play. You can already feel the momentum. I mean, interception obviously is gonna help, but SNU seems ready to play today. And it is Mark Henderson who gets the start at right tackle for the Crimson Storm. The sophomore from Amarillo. So Porter in the backfield with, with Ramos. Hooper, Hicks, and Walker to his left split out. Porter bounces it to the outside and runs over a man at the 31 yard line. Actually, they're gonna mark him just short of the first down at the 32 yard line. Pickup of nine. Yeah, and all they did was just fake the bubble screen right there, and it's a design quarterback draw, the offensive line uh, block for the draw. Um, and I'm sure uh, Porter had the option to throw it, but, man, the hole was wide open. He, he was untouched for probably about eight yards before, uh, before the tackle. The decisive act running of Porter has been a big uh, change for this SNU offense as opposed to the more deliberate approach from Jacob Spady. Brady goes in motion to the left. Porter rolling right, and it's overthrows Brady, and it is intercepted on the play. 
for Swasu, and he's got blockers down the sideline, and he finally steps out of bounds at, the, at their own 45-yard line. It's number 16 for Swasu on the interception. And just a little bit of an overthrow there for yeah. Gage Porter. The play design was great. It's just a play action flood, which flood route concepts mean everyone's flowing to the play action side. And unfortunately, uh, Porter uh, just put a little bit uh, too much mustard on that pass, and it sailed on him. Um, you know, with you want to you want to say the wind is a good thing, but sometimes the wind makes you throw further. So Swasu returns the turnover with a turnover of their own. Freeman fakes to Knowles. Option pitch on the outside. Missed tackle from Flynn, but the ball carrier slips down there. That's Jared Rayburn. Pickup of three or four on the play. Flynn missed the tackle, but Rayburn did slip down after the short pickup. And it'll be second and six for Swasu, just on their side of midfield at the 49-yard line. Freeman takes the snap, looks right, swings it to Knowles out of the backfield. He's got space. He jukes, runs over Angel Hernandez, and he plows down to the 44-yard line for a Swasu first down. Yeah, just a swing pass, and it's just a clear out concept to get the chunk yards that Swasu wants on that one. The outside receiver just ran a hitch uh, to, to push that corner back, uh, which leaves uh, the outside linebacker to have to flow way, way down to make that tackle. So first and 10 for Swasu at the 44-yard line. Two wide receivers to the left. Fakes the handoff to Knowles, and Freeman's got lots of space around the left side. He takes on Josh Jordan and runs through the tackle down to the 29-yard line. Gets the Swasu sideline fired up. And we first and 10 again for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and again, like we said in the first, the first drive, Swasu's just doing the things to make SNU stay disciplined. It's just a play-action read right there. Defensive end just flows with the running back. It's an easy pull for uh, for Swasu. Freeman takes the snap. Again, that option look to the right. And he's got Rayburn, who's got a lot of space. And he is dragged down at the four-yard line. Looks like we've got a horse collar tackle on that, but we might have a hold as well on the outside on Swasu. Yeah. I believe this is going to come back. Yeah, probably the easiest holding call to call um, that the refs will see all season. Um, essentially uh, being tackled by the wide receiver on that outside run. Yeah, Rayburn's going to be the, the guilty party, I believe, on this one for the hold. So these penalties should offset. So we will have first down replayed. So it will remain first down at the 29-yard line. Swasu shuffling receivers in and out here to start this one. Two back set for Freeman, one to either side. Two wide receivers to the left as well. Freeman fakes and goes option to the left this time, and Knowles is just dragged down in the backfield by Flynn. What a huge play from Flynn. Tremendous closing speed there, Landry. Yeah, absolutely, and it looked like SNU was just running man, or at least man with the linebackers. It's an easier pickup when you have your linebackers, um, one on the quarterback and one on the running back, but uh, uh, Swasu's done a good job of making them um, – really have have to choose between the quarterback and the running back, and that really is when the, the option game opens up. Receiver stacked to either side. Freeman looking right. He's going to tuck it and run. Got a lot of space in front of him, and he slides down at the 22-yard line, just short of the first down. Pickup of 12 on the play. It'll be third and three for Swazu as we tick down to 10 minutes to go here in the first quarter. An interception either way for the Crimson Storm and the Bulldogs in this one, and Swasu has taken advantage of theirs and has moved down deep into SNU territory. 
The give is to Nulls, and he is taken down from behind by Miles Roll. Just a gain of one, and that will bring up fourth down. Looks like a heavy package coming in for Swasu. Uh, yeah, it's probably too windy to trust a field goal right here. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna put in essentially two uh, two up backs, kind of fullback types to try to pick up this first down. Swasu struggles with field goals. Two kickers have attempted field goals this year, and they are combined four for ten. So like Landry said, into this win, not a winning formula there. Freeman will give it to Knowles, who probes the right side, and he will pick up the first down and powers through Noah Campbell down to the 14-yard line. About the 13-yard line, actually, is where they're going to mark that. And that will be first down and 10 as Swasu enters the red zone for the first time today. Two wide receivers to the right of Freeman as Knowles also shifts to the right of Freeman. Receiver comes in motion on the jet sweep and he slips down right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, number 19 for Swasu, DJ Hicks. And it wouldn't have gone anywhere anyways. Good pursuit um, by SNU. And for Swasu, you, you love big plays. You love open field because that's the nature of your offense. It can be tough on a pass-heavy offense when you get inside the red zone. The field shrinks. The defense gets a lot closer. I mean, you have to make decisions quicker, and that, and that can, uh, can slow down the momentum for sure. Option pitch to Rayburn on the right side, and he is gang tackled by a couple linebackers for SNU. Angel Hernandez got there first. Ethan Spurlock also in on the tackle, just a gain of one again. Brings up third and eight from the 11 for Swasu and a big opportunity for SNU's defense to stand tall here early in this one. Freeman looking right, now back to the middle. He's gonna tuck it and run. Pump fake and dives forward at the five. I think they're gonna mark him just short. They are gonna mark him short at the five yard line. It will be fourth down. And here comes tight end and the fullback again. package coming yeah. back in again. No surprise here, although Freeman's limping around uh, on his left leg. So fourth and two from the five. The give is to Knowles right up the middle. He will have the first down as he gets down to the two-yard line. First and goal for Swasu upcoming. Same play the other way. Just inside zone. Uh, just enough for three, four yards and another first down. Heavy package stays in. As Knowles takes the handoff, and he will power his way into the end zone for the Bulldogs touchdown. So just a uh, pretty methodical drive, and Swasu mm -hmm. doing a lot of their damage on the ground on that drive. Yeah, absolutely. And and SNU has not not played the not played terrible uh, as we get swinging the swinging gate formation here by Swasu. Um, and here's the trick play going for two. And it is going to be knocked away yeah, and that by was Dorian Harris. Good coverage on the play there. Pretty much dead from the start. I, I don't know if the kicker makes that decision. I'm sure a coach does, but it seems, uh, seems as if uh, just kicking the field goal would have been a better option. Pass intended for Savion McCauley. And Dorian Harris on the perfect coverage there was able to knock that away. So our score was 6-18 to go here in the first quarter. Bulldog 6, Crimson Storm coming up.
And welcome back here as SNU is set to receive kickoff from the Bulldogs here. Stephen Gordon and Alfred Greer back deep to receive. Really not that deep with the win. They're standing at the 15-yard line. And a low liner. And Greer fields at about the 17. Got some blockers on the outside. Terrific block from Shellmeyer over there on the far side. And Greer takes it out to the 45-yard line. So great starting field position for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, and uh, SNU's offense did a lot of things right. Um, and it's just about just doing a little bit of execution. Now, I mentioned uh, not so eloquently that the wind obviously can push the ball a little further than you want it to go. Uh, but, but throwing into the wind is nice on those deep passes, but it can also make them sail if you're – if your feet aren't set on a play action rollout, you really can often put a lot more on a pass than you think you're going to. That's going to be a false start on the left tackle, Hunter Flanagan. And now we do have a bit of shufflage on the offensive line. This was more of what we expected to see with Joey Carrion at center and Hunter Jones, the normal center, shifting out to right tackle. Yeah, and these are the things you expect when you when you shuffle up the line. Uh, it's false starts, things like that. Your your rhythm um, that you can usually have from a quarterback to a center can be off just a hair, which makes people jump just a little bit sooner than uh, than than what they normally do. Greer in the backfield with Porter. Hooper is split out to the right, and Walker and uh, excuse me, Hooper is to the left, and Greer fumbles the pitch. And it is recovered by Swasu. So just not a good start here for the SNU offense as Greer was unable to handle the pitch from Gage Porter. And another turnover for the Bulldogs defense gives Swasu terrific field position at the SNU 37 yard line. 6.03 to go first quarter. Swasu already with a six nothing lead and looking to add to that as they come back out on the field here. Marcus Anderson in the game at running back for the Bulldogs. He is left of Casey Freeman. Play action, Freeman looking deep, nobody open. All kinds of time though. He's just gonna fling this one toward the end zone and the ball is caught by number seven, Eddie Thomas, but we're gonna get a push off here. Yeah, this, this is a pretty clear push off. It was a great catch, I'll give him that. He made a great play on the ball, but he made great a play, great play on the ball because he uh, pushed his defender into the turf. Uh, so it's a pretty easy call for the official to make that one. Um, and, so. and great defense by Trenton Smith anyway, even though he was pushed, still managed to get a hand on it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Thomas, like you said, terrific catch, but just a pretty blatant uh, shove in the back there, and that will send Swasu back on their side of midfield with the 15-yard penalty. Yeah, so they'll be first and 25 from their own 48-yard line. And those kind of plays a scare defensive coordinator like crazy. A quarterback running around, busted routes. Anybody can come up and across the field, and SNU did a good job. Freeman, bit of a high snap. Angel Hernandez coming unchecked on the blitz. And Freeman shove, shoveled that toward Knowles. Knowles couldn't hang on, but that play was going nowhere. It would have been a loss at best. So a excellent blitz call there from SNU as Angel Hernandez unchecked off the edge. So it'll be second and 25 now for the Bulldogs. Freeman gives the ball to Marcus Anderson and he bounces it to the right. Picks up a big chunk of yardage, almost all the penalty yardage back. He's marked down to the 39 yard line, pick up a 13 on the play. So it will be third and 12 for Swasu here at the 39 yard line of SNU. A frustrating second down because this is clearly four down territory. Yeah, I mean, unless, 
unless you hold him to one yard right here, Swasi's going to go for it. And you put him in for, uh, what could be could have been a third and long to a third and manageable. SNU with six defensive backs on the field as Noah Campbell, Smith, Trenton Smith, and Anthony Stevens are all on the field right now. We've got a false start on Swasu, and that'll make their third down even more difficult. Yeah, it looked like uh, just about everyone on Swasu lunged at the same time. So I don't know if the quarterback's hard count was off or, um, or if there was some, some miscommunication, but quite a few members of the, the Bulldogs jumped. SNU along the defensive line without Marin Bilitek, who had a knee injury. He's out for the season. They're shuffling in a lot of different personnel right now. Derek Gillis is at nose guard, normally at defensive end. Freeman fakes the handoff to Anderson, looks right. He's got DJ Hicks with the catch and powers through a couple tacklers, and he will pick up the first down, down to the 25-yard line. A strong run there from DJ Hicks after the catch. Carried two SNU defenders for about seven yards there to pick up the first down on third and 17. Back-breaking conversion there yeah. for Swasu. I mean, it seems like it's, you know, it's only the first quarter, but it seems like every time SNU has them in a position for success, they somehow get a first down. Give is to Anderson. He will bounce it out to the left. Flag comes in behind the play as Anderson plows down to the six-yard line. Is put down there by Trenton Smith, but I think we're going to get a hold here on the left side of the offensive line. Yeah, just an outside run, and, and sometimes on those outside runs when – when uh, the running back seems to run free without a lot of contact, but there's bodies around, you have to assume there's going to be a hold because usually someone will get a hand on them or chip them a little bit. Uh, but uh, it looked like an, a hold on the slot receiver on that play. So the 10 yard penalty will push it back to the 34 yard line where it will be first and 19. Another, another first and long. For Swasu, uh, hopefully on this set of downs, SNU can capitalize uh, on the long, um, long down and distance. Freeman gives to Anderson again right up the middle, and he will barrel down to the 31-yard line. So pick up a three on the play. Zach Lloyd in on the tackle there, along with Daniel Flynn. So it'll be second and 16 here. As we tick down to three and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter in what has been a little sloppy so far for the Crimson Storm with a couple of turnovers. Freeman looking left, now back right, steps up in the pocket. He's got Rayburn over the middle, and he will dive down to the 14-yard line is where they're going to mark him. That will be enough for a first down for Swasu. We have not seen J.R. Amigi for Swasu, their leading receiver this year. 36 catches for 769 yards. Have not seen him out on the field today. The break for Swas or for SNU, but has not deterred Swasu's offensive attack as Anderson takes the handoff and carries down to the eight yard line. Pickup of six, will be second and four. And Zach Lloyd is down on the field for the Crimson Storm. While the trainers attend to him, we will step aside for a minute and be right back as soon as they uh, deal with this injury.
And Lloyd able to walk off under his own power. And we are back to action here. Second and four for Swasu. Freeman, the give to Anderson around the left side. Runs through the tackle of Jaquel Davis. Is not able to escape the tackle of Miles Roll. They mark him down at the four-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. So it'll be first and goal for yeah, Swasu. And a lot of arm tackling at first contact by SNU. You know, you, you want them to, to wrap up and drive their feet. Swasu's had a lot of opportunities to, to break some tackles for longer runs. Freeman takes the handoff. He will give it to Knowles, trying to stretch it to the outside. Runs through a couple more tackles, and he will pile his way into the end zone for another Swasu touchdown. Like you said, Landry, just a few too many arm tackle attempts on that, pos on that possession, uh, and that play was the capper. Yeah, SNU is, is putting themselves into great position or positions to, to get off the field. Uh, but, you know, when you're out there for a long time in this quarter, they've been out there for quite a number of plays, especially the defense. You're going to get worn down. You're going to do undisciplined things like arm tackle. And so the offense has got to have a long drive. Jackson will height on for the extra point, and it is up and good. So with 1.47 to go here in the first quarter, it's Swasu 13 and SNU 0. And, and SNU doesn't even need to – I mean, a, a touchdown helps, obviously. But SNU doesn't even need to be concerned with, with scoring as much as uh, having a long, consistent drive. Uh, because if you're the defense and the offense goes three and out and you're back on there, you've just been scored on. And it's not like Swasu scoring on big plays. It's just chunk after chunk after chunk after chunk. And that exha it's exhausting. Yeah, I, I'd love to see how many plays the SNU defense has been on the field just in this first quarter alone. I'm sure it's it's got to be well over 20 plays, uh, which is which is quite a few in, in just one quarter. I bet it's close to 30 even. Yeah, for sure. And you know, SNU, you start look like we're going to get off to a great start with that interception by uh, Jaquel Davis, but then just turned it right back over on their. Uh, offensive possession on the interception from Porter, and then on the very first play of their next possession, turned it over on the Alfred Greer fumble. Uh, so just haven't, like you said, haven't even had the opportunity really to establish anything uh, offensively yet. Right. So it'll be Ryan Buchanan to kick off for Swasu, Gordon and Greer back deep at the 15 yard line for high kick that hangs up for Gordon who fields at about the 12 takes off across the field stops Gets up field, but he's going to be taken down at the 19-yard line, and that is where SNU will take over first and 10. Yeah, pretty good pursuit on the kickoff uh, by Swasu. The blocking was there, uh, but Swasu was just quicker, quicker than the blocks, and so he has to cut back inside. Still picks up a decent chunk of yardage, um, right about the 20 uh, for SNU's third drive of the day. It looks like we are going to have kind of a rotation as far as the offensive line goes as Henderson is back at right mm -hmm. tackle and Jones moves back to center. Ramos in the backfield along with Jacoby Hicks. Walker and Brady split out to the left and Vance Hooper out to the right. And Walker and Hicks both go in motion at the same time and a lot of confusion there between Walker and Porter as far as what the play call was. A lot of hand signals back and forth. And, and Hicks and Walker both went in motion. That'll be a five-yard penalty for mm -hmm. the Storm. Just a really look discombobulated on offense so far. Yeah. And, again, it just it just seems a little undisciplined. And, and, and honestly, for SNU, it's a little out of characteristic. You know, these are some mental errors that 
you don't see too often with a, a motion heavy offense, double motion, that's uh, pretty rare. Porter delayed handoff to Ramos, who's got a lot of space up the middle. And he's gonna be taken down at the 23 yard line. And that, that run was so wide open be, because Grayson Winter pancaked at the Swasu inside linebacker. I mean, was just laying on him, which you gotta love that. I know the coaches will when they see it on film tomorrow. Give that man some syrup on that's, the sideline. That's right. You saw you saw that coach, right? The offensive line coach that gives his players uh, yeah, a shot of syrup that, yeah. after a pancake block. <laughs> that's awesome. Walker in motion. Porter fakes the give to him and tries to cut up field, and he is taken down on the play. Look like number 52, Kilpatrick, in there on the tackle. Just gain of one. Brings up third and four from the 25-yard line. Big play here for the Crimson Storm offense, who have yet to establish any sort of rhythm in this one with a couple turnovers. Then Brady comes off the field. Yeah, he's been sent off by the officials. It looks like for a knee pad issue or of some kind. So uh, change of play real quick with 10 seconds on the clock. Christian Schellmeyer comes into the game. He's split out to the left. Three on the clock now as Porter takes the snap. Fakes the pass and oh. barrel runs up the middle. He's able to get enough for the first down. That's Gives a, a nice solid stiff arm to DeAndre Scott, the strong safety, and Scott throws him to the ground for his trouble. He has a good hard run, and it looks like even at the beginning of that play, he got face mask a little bit, but uh, but no call. Either way, it doesn't matter. First down for the Crimson Storm, and a good tough run to end the quarter. So SNU in an early hole here against Swasu is the Bulldogs 13, the Crimson Storm 0 as we come to the end of the first quarter. You are listening to SNU football. We're here at the start of the second quarter. SNU first and 10 from their own 36 yard line. Hicks going in motion. We got a false start on the Crimson Storm. Looks like that one's going to be on Grayson Winters. Freshman from Prosper, Texas. Done a nice job stepping in uh, because of injuries over the past couple weeks and be a Good building block for this offensive line mm -hmm. in the in the years to come. So SNU again behind the chains here. Now first and 15 at their own 31 yard line. Yeah, and you know SNU, uh, you know, today's senior day, and there, there are a lot of great seniors in the program right now, but it's a lot of young talent as well. Fake handoff to Walker and Porter runs up the middle. And he will pick up the first down all the way out to midfield. Man. Following the block of uh, Vance Hooper there, who was able to get over to the middle and pick up some of the clutter there in the middle of the field for the Swasu defense. And Porter with a 19-yard pickup and a first down for the Crimson Storm. Absolutely. And, and we talked about in the first few weeks uh, that Porter, when he got in, his reads were a little slow, right? And, and sometimes he'd make the wrong read. But, man, he played that read perfectly. He stretched the defense as far as he could, and then he just split uh, split the gap that was uh, kicked out by the tackle. And, man, there's no one within 10 yards of him. Easy first down for the Crimson Storm. 
Porter steps back to pass. Again, will run right at the middle, bounces it to the outside, escapes a tackle, and just barely taken down on the play by number 27, Darius Franklin, the free safety. Well, that's another pickup of seven yards for Porter. Be, bring up second and three as the SNU offense starting to click a little bit with Porter's running ability. Yeah, absolutely, and this is great for the defense. One, defense has gotten their breather. They've gotten some time off the field. But two, it gives the coaches a couple things. It, it gives them the, the ability uh, to talk with the defense initially, but then when you're standing on the sidelines, oh, I might want to I might want to say this or adjust this, then you have that time to do some real coaching before you get your defense back on the field uh, for an offense like Swasu who's really clicking. Nate Walker split out to the right. Devin Brady at tight end to the left. Hicks comes in motion now to the right. The give is to Ramos. Good, tough running up the middle for the senior running back, and he will have the first down at the 40-yard line of Swasu. Yeah, and he really made something out of nothing. Uh, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a gaping hole by any means, but uh, he kind of split the defense right there and, and got just enough of the first down, another first down for SNU, which means the defense is off the field for a little bit longer. Um, and, and like we talked about before the game, this is a rhythm kind of drive right here. Uh, they look really crisp um, after the, the – the double motion at the beginning, the illegal mm -hmm. legal shift. It's looked a lot, a lot cleaner. Sometimes it, does, it is nice as a running back to be 5'8". Sometimes it's not. Right. <laughs> and SNU will take a timeout here. A little bit more confusion on the communication here. Something we've noticed so far, and this one as far as the offense goes, Yes, you have you know guys that have stepped and been able to step up as far as the injuries are concerned, but um, you know it really has limited the depth well, as far as the skill position guys are concerned. Besides Greer at running back and Shellmeyer coming in for one play uh, because of Brady's knee pad issues, we have not seen any other players as far as skill positions go for uh, SNU. It's been Brady, Ramos, or Greer, and then Hooper and Hicks. Mm -hmm. And Walker, and and that's been it for SNU so far in this yeah. one. Yeah, and and if they're playing well, keep playing them. You know, and I know we've talked about this before, but if if it's working, let it keep working. Uh, so, and they've looked really efficient offensively. You know, without those two, the two turnovers, you know, they've looked like they've had one of their better days today, which is kind of weird to say because it's down 13-0, but they've played pretty well. Ramos to the left of Porter. Walker coming in motion. Fakes the handoff. Porter right up the middle. Makes a man miss. Got a great block on the outside, and he's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Crimson Storm. Gage Porter goes 40 yards for the Crimson Storm's first score of today. And SNU right back in this one, pending the extra point. Landry, nothing fancy about what SNU nope. is doing right now. He just <laughs> got one-on-one on one with Franklin right in the middle of the field and made him miss, and he was gone. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what's really impressive about that play, and this is uh, this seems minute, um, but Hooper had the ability to just absolutely block somebody in the back, and he let up. Uh, so that's a, just a small discipline thing. That That's what winning teams do, right? They make those good decisions when they need it, uh, which leads – you know, which sounds silly, but uh, a block in the back obviously prevents a touchdown, but uh, but to not block someone in the back when you're on the field, you just want to hit somebody, especially when your quarterback's running, and to just do those little disciplined things, um, that's how you can turn a 13 nothing game into uh, to way more competitive uh, of a matchup. So I'll be anxious to see the defense when they're on the field. You know, mm. certainly they've got some rest, uh, even though it's only been about – you know, five minutes of actual game time that they've been off the field. Uh, but but I'm sure that they have some momentum, too. Um, and that's a real a real boost to the defense when the offense is scoring. It was close. It was very close for Hooper. I mean, those, yes. those hands were out. Yeah. They were, they were <laughs> he there. Might have, he might have, might have given him just a little touch. Yes. And you know that ref looked at it and thought, ah, forget it. Yeah. So, um, it wasn't enough to make a difference. That guy wasn't making the play. So. Yeah. And it looked like he the uh, defensive back was pivoting enough to where it you know probably refs didn't have the best angle on it right. either so right better safe than sorry on that one yeah absolutely 
Better touchdown than no touchdown. Maybe that's. So we'll see what uh, SNU's strategy is as far as kickoffs into this wind, which is, again, very stiff south breeze today. All the flags straight out from the goalposts and around the stadium. And again, Luke, I mentioned at the beginning of the game, they, they're leaving quite a huge gap around the 40 uh, of a SNU's sideline. And, and if they can high pooch it, you know, they may not want to. They may just want to take the yards, but, but there's definitely some space for them to, to do that. And the ball falls off the tee, so we'll tee this back up, try it again. Again, Aguiano in, in warm-ups was drilling 55-yard field goals, but as SNU warms up on the north side of the field, he didn't have a chance to see what he would be able to do into this win. Right. So this is our first chance to see what SNU's strategy will be for him here as the ball falls off the tee again. And yep. who and gets to be uh, the lucky person yeah. to hold it? That's when the ref is going to say, you hold this football. Yeah, it's Nobody be wants some, to do it, and, oh, someone, and it's yeah. going to – looks like Dylan Bauer was voluntold to do it. Yes. <laughs> Four different people kind of stuck their head past the 30 to look yeah. for Bauer. Uh, yeah, Bauer must be a guy who actually uh, has held before. You yes. know, The kicker is very particular about those things. Doesn't want someone who's going to move his finger at the last second or something like that. Ah, oh, my finger. <laughs> Third time's the charm here as Aguiano will sky it right where you called it. Catches up in the wind and Marcus Anderson right there to catch that and let it fall to the ground or and falls to the ground with it. I think that might be my first uh, correct guess all season. So I make lots of estimations about what I would do, which means hardly anything, but, but it felt good. It felt good that the coaches thought what I thought. Absolutely. So it will be first and 10 for Swasu at – their own 38-yard line. I'll be interested to see what SNU does with that. Oh, and we have an offsides on SNU, so that will move it up to the 43-yard line. So great starting field position for yeah. Swasu as uh, Brayon Jackson, the senior, is in on defense here for the Crimson Storm at that outside linebacker position. Trayvon Hadley shifts over to Inside linebacker. Rayburn comes in motion. The give is to Knowles right at the middle, and not much doing there. Mm -hmm. Going to be a three-yard pickup to the 46-yard line. And it's a hard run, but even with the hard run, it wasn't much of a gain. SNU clogged the hole pretty quickly and, and wrapped him up. So second and seven for Swasu. We tick down to about 12 minutes to go before halftime. Two wide receivers to the right. And Knowles is to the left, now moves over to the to the left of Freeman. And Freeman will check it down to Knowles out of the backfield. A little quick feet, but Ja'Kale Davis forces him out of bounds after another short gain of three. He'll bring up third and about four to go from the 49-yard line. Actually, they mark him to the 50. It'll be third and three now for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, a bit of a generous spot there. But, yeah, um, I agree. <laughs> you know, my perspective is maybe a little different uh, than the refs who's on the field, but look like he got an extra yard. Backs on either side of Freeman, standing at the 45-yard line, awaiting the snap. Fakes the handoff to Knowles, pitches it out to Anderson. He's got the first down and runs out of bounds through Ja'Kale Davis down at the 43-yard line of SNU. Pickup of seven, and the chains will move for the Bulldogs. You know, and as a coach to inside and outside linebackers, you got it. I'm sure they're coaching eye discipline, eye discipline, eye discipline, and that's one um, where that outside linebacker, uh, number 25 for the Crimson Storm, just got his eyes sucked in just a little too tight and uh, and couldn't get outside for that option play. Freeman pulls it out of the gut of Knowles and hits DJ Hicks. On the post route, down to the 28-yard line. So pick up a 15 on that play. Terrific pass there from Freeman. Just a good read on that. Good yeah. coverage on the play, but a sure. really nice throw from Freeman right, yeah. on, right on the spot for Hicks. And that's a, one of the first times we've seen kind of a natural RPO look 
uh, from Swasu and just a deep slant uh, that, that's thrown right where it needs to be. Give is to Knowles up the middle and Bauer comes barreling in unchecked off the end of the line and stops him after a gain of one. And that's the first time we've seen uh, Swasu with that, that heavier look um, on a first and first and long. Usually the only times we've seen that is on fourth and short or, or on the goal line. So it looks like they're still heavy. Maybe two tight ends right here for Swasu. And tight end split out wide to the right and Kellen Smith as well. So he is listed as a wide receiver. A tight end to either side with Marcus Anderson in the backfield with Freeman. Fakes the handoff to him, rolls. Looking for the throwback to Anderson, but pressure from Noah Campbell. Yeah, and certainly, they, and certainly they have to call that intentional grounding. I mean, he, there wasn't anyone. There was a wide receiver close, but it's 10 yards. <laughs> 10 yards down the, the field yeah, that he threw, threw the ball out of bounds. Well out of bounds. He was definitely still in the pocket as he. Yeah, that's what they're saying now. Actually kind of retreated back is. into the there pocket. It is. This is a, this is a great <laughs> opportunity for SNU to get their offense back on the field right here. It's going to be third and, and long, third and close to 25, uh, if not more. Um, so SNU really uh, great defense right there, great pressure, good coverage, which makes uh, Freeman throw a really unwise pass. Yeah, it was really the pressure of Campbell that kind of forced Freeman back into the pocket. Looked like he wanted to roll right and throw back to Anderson, who is running a wheel route. The great mm -hmm. coverage on the left side. So it will be third and 24 now, back at the 42-yard line. Freeman looking left, now scans the middle. And he'll hit Rayburn down at about the 32, 33-yard line, and he's wrapped up by Josh Jordan immediately. Fourth and 14. This is the fourth down that SNU has been wanting all game, right? <laughs> not a not a fourth and two or fourth and one, but a fourth and long where you have to force Swasu to do something. So fourth and 15 from the 33-yard line, and Ryan Buchanan will come out to attempt a 50-yard field goal. Buchanan just one for four this season with a long of 31 and has not attempted a 50-yard field goal. He missed his only attempt from 40 or more. Needless to say, this would be a season long. With the win, he has enough distance, but it is wide to the right. And it wasn't that far wide to the right. It was a no. pretty, pretty good kick, uh, but definitely pushed it wide. And, and SNU has the ball again, down by six. And, the, the, and the, the most crucial thing is the defense is off the field. And, uh, and the offense is back on the field, which is Great news for the Crimson Storm. I'm sure the coaching staff who's just in the room next to us is, is much happier, much more pleased than they were just a few moments ago. Certainly. Again, that wind with plenty of power behind it. That would have been good for about 55 mm -hmm. or so. Wishbone look to give is to Walker. Nope, Porter keeps and is stacked up at the 36-yard line. Kilpatrick and number 13, DeAndre Scott, strong safety for Swaso in on the tackle. Pickup of three. It's going to be second and seven for SNU. And uh, like we talk about every game, you know, we saw how hard that was even to follow. You know, me and you both thought Walker had the ball, um, but Porter's the one who keeps it. And if you're on the field, it's even more challenging as a linebacker to try to look over the defensive line and make quick reads. And that's why we've seen some of these holes really open up for SNU today. Walker comes back in motion, fakes to him again. Porter runs through one tackler, is not able to escape the second. As Jalen Carr, freshman cornerback from Longview, takes Porter down for a loss of one on the play, so it'll be third and eight from the 35-yard line. Yeah, that's one Porter probably should have should have let, uh, let the Jets sweep with Walker. Uh, should have handed it off to Walker on that one. Um, and in fact, after that play, they, one of the coaches was pointing at Walker, <laughs> I'm sure saying, uh, maybe next time look at him. Walker comes in motion one more time. And Porter with the inside screen to Brady, who gets tripped up by Kilpatrick just barely. 
two yards he short. Picks up six. You go for gonna, it right here. And it's going to be fourth down. You're punting into the wind. Yeah, I think you. I think you got to punt on this side of the okay. fifty. It, it does make it a tough call. Ryan Reed does get a lot of air on his punt, so he it'll be interesting does. to see what he, how he approaches kicking into this wind. Yeah, and he, he's a good punter. I mean, he, he definitely has a leg. Um, he's the only punter I've ever seen who, who I thought was a defensive end the first time I saw him. Yeah, <laughs> both by number and by size. Yes. He just hangs this up there. Good spiraling kick. And it's fielded at the 32-yard line, and Carr falls ahead to the 33. Yeah, I think there's some confusion. I think SNU thought he called for a fair catch, maybe just the nature of how how long the ball mm -hmm. was in the air. I think so. And uh, he caught it, and I think he was a little surprised that he didn't catch it, uh, call a fair catch, and everyone just kind of tumbled into each other. So a net of about 25 yards on the punt. So it didn't do a lot as far as flipping the field goals, but certainly better than – Swasu starting at the at in SNU territory, right. but if that's a, if that's as much as you're going to get on a net punt going into the wind, certainly leaves you plenty of uh, things to think about as far as strategy goes here in the second and third mm -hmm. quarters. Absolutely. And Luke, I'm taking a look at this crowd right here for SNU. It's probably the most full I've ever seen the, these stadium there these seats. Um, we got people standing on the rails. For the first time this we season, got it's lots great of people stuff. with chairs in the end zone here as well. So it's a terrific crowd. It really is a gorgeous day for football. The yeah. wind certainly puts a little bit of a damper on things, but as long as you got a good, good solid sweatshirt and a and a blanket, that's right. Some chapstick, and yes, and some chapstick, then uh, should be good to go. Yeah, and nope. you've been coming to the stadium for quite some time. So yeah, really, for you to, for you to say that, that that's uh, yeah, that's a good decade plus of. Absolutely. SNU football that and there's been some games that the stadium has been full but I've you know there's quite a bit of people standing uh, on the rails because there's not enough seats so Swasu takes over first and 10 at their own 33 yard line Freeman fakes the handoff to Knowles fires a quick slant to Hicks who drops it great throw from Freeman right in the pocket of Hicks but he's unable to make the catch it'll be second and 10 To go back to your point about the time SNU has spent on the field, Swasu did run 24 plays in that yeah. first quarter, and that is a pace that SNU has managed to knock them off of a little bit. Yes. But still, that's that's a lot of plays for one quarter. Right. Rayburn comes in motion behind Freeman, and the give is to Knowles around the right side. And, oh, a terrific yes. tackle there from Dorian Harris, who came flying in. Uh, made a great one-on-one -on -one tackle at the 39-yard line. Pickup of six, right. but it will be third and four now. That tackle is kind of a fearless tackle, and that tackle is the difference between third and inches and third and four. Um, and, man, it, <laughs> he, did, he didn't have any fear. He, it seemed like he kind of got kneed in the face a little bit, but he, he followed through. and Great tackle. Knowles and Anderson in the backfield with Freeman, who takes the snap. Gives to Anderson up the middle. And he's met right there at the line of scrimmage by Miles Roll. Falls forward for a gain of about one, but it will be fourth down and three for the Bulldogs. Terrific play from yes. Miles Roll filling that hole. And he looks like he might have a bit of a stinger as he comes off the field. His yeah. right arm's hanging a little, mm. little loose there. And yeah, yeah, and I'm sure it didn't feel like one of his teammates just gave him a high five in his, his arm that's got the stinger in it. So... This is the first time we've seen the, the punt team for Swasu all day. Yes, it is. Kane Bowen sends this one deep. It checks up at the five. And Swasu will down this inside the five-yard line. What a punt. And a massive punt there. I mean, not only – it looked like that thing was going to bounce 20 yards out of the end zone, and it hit the five-yard line and just died. Great punt. Be about a 52-yard punt by my calculations here. Yeah, I'll trust your calculations. I mean, that, well, that thing was oh, in the 57, air. 57-yard punt. Wow. So that got thing a, just flew. 
Got a lot of green grass to cover with five minutes and 13 seconds left. Luke, um, how, do you, how do you, if you're the offense, how do you end this half well? Uh, I think just, I think if SNU is able to just keep the ball moving on the ground, yeah, I don't think, I don't think scoring necessarily is paramount here, but if you can make it, Swasu play defense for five minutes here, that'd be great. Porter fakes pass. Runs up the middle, tries to hurdle his own man. Is stood up right at the five-yard line when number 31, Jacob Rodman. That's as far as Porter will get. Second down now. Looks like he got a little bit of a favorable spot, and uh, I think SNU will be pleased with that. <laughs> Agreed. Six-yard six spot instead of the five. Looks like he had to hurdle his center there, Joey Carrion. Trying to make something out of nothing. And it's interesting, we haven't seen the ball in Nate Walker's hands at all. Walker mainly just being used as a decoy at this point on the jet sweep action. Porter will take the snap. Option look to the left. Late pitch to Ramos. And Ramos was able to fall back on top of it. And it's a similar play to the, f the first fumble of the game. I mean, almost identical. Just the toss is, is late and the running back, it's been behind the running back two times. And uh, I... You know, I don't want to. I don't want to guess, but but I'm going to. I I doubt we'll see the option like that again, at least <laughs> at yes. least for a while. Yeah, today's offenses aren't uh, aren't like they used to be as far as being ready for a pitch at any moment, <laughs> yeah, no. literally any moment. No. Um, on a speed sweep like that. So Walker and Ramos now in the backfield. Walker motions out to the left. Porter. Rolling out, and the ball is caught. What a terrific play by Devin Brady, who had the defender draped yeah. all over him. That's number 16, Trey, excuse me, C.J. Jennings. Yeah, and I'm not sure how there's all over Brady. Not sure how there's not a flag on that one. I mean, no. he, he's tackling him before the ball even gets there, and Brady makes a spectacular catch. I mean, really, really incredible. We've seen two really great catches. One interception and. And one on the sideline right yeah. there. Yeah, that is terrific. So a big third down conversion for the Crimson Storm as they go into a wishbone look here. Now Hicks motions out of that. Quick pass out to Brady. Blockers in front, but a really nice job there from Gerald White. Free safety out of Tipton, Oklahoma, firing through the blocks and brought that down for a short gain. Yeah, and on those, you, you just coach to, to hold on, right? You just hope that you know someone's coming to clean it up. So if you can't make that tackle by yourself, you just hold on as long as you can. Um, and and sure enough, people from Swas or the safety from Swasu was able to, to come help clean it up, or the linebacker, excuse me. Still a pickup of six for SNU, so a very positive play there to Hicks. But with the blocking, it looked like it could have been for more. Walker. As Porter keeps, Walker visibly frustrated on the field. Really late pull from yeah. Porter. And, you know, obviously with plays like that, and both players have to have a very firm grip on the ball. Uh, but Walker visibly getting a little frustrated that he sure. has not touched the ball yet today except in scenarios such as that. Right. Yeah, and – you know, I don't think it was the wrong read. I think it was just too late. You know, if you, you get if, if if you've given the ball, you gotta you gotta let them go with it. You mm -hmm. can't just yank it out of there. That's where uh, we've seen this season some fumbles happen. A little late getting into the play there. Uh, timeout for SNU. 141 to go here in the first half. SNU trails 13 to seven. They will get the ball to start the third quarter here, and I think that's part of the reason why there's not really any urgency to score here. Uh, but SNU certainly uh, with a third and two here, with a conversion here, would certainly threaten to run off these last five-plus minutes of the first half and really put some just a little bit of wear and tear on the Swasu defense, which mm -hmm. with uh, the way SNU offense operates, Something you definitely want to do. And SNU, despite their offensive struggles, have been pretty good as far as time of possession across mm -hmm. the board this season. 
Uh, a lot of that, unfortunately, because of some turnovers deep in their own territory, I gave the opponents short field and short time yeah. to uh, to make some plays there. But a big third and two here for the Crimson Storm at their own 26-yard line, 141 yeah. to go before halftime. Yeah, especially if you don't convert this and you got to punt into the wind again. And there's the give to Walker, and he hits the hole hard and runs through a tackle. He's got space down the sideline, and he barrels into Swasu territory all the way down to the 42-yard line, and Nate Walker, <laughs> on his first carry of the game, takes it 32 yards. That's right. He was running like a man who wants the football, right, uh, who's been eager to get the ball. And I'm sure the coaches see that and drop a play uh, that springs him uh, for a, uh, a play that really flipped the field. And now puts SNU not just trying to run out the clock, but puts SNU in a position where they're trying to score before uh, this half is over. Down to just one timeout, though, as the clock ticks under 1.15 to go. And again, into the win. Aguiano with a strong leg, but still into the win. Ramos with the handoff. Patient running, finds the hole, barrels through an arm tackle, and it takes three Swasu defenders to drag him down at the 26-yard line. 16 yards on the gain from Ramos. Oh, and you said it, Luke. I was patient running. You know, inexperienced running backs uh, will want to just speed past their blocker, especially on a pool like that. But he waits for his uh, big offensive guard to come around and clear the space for him. Walker coming in motion. And Porter and Walker both did not want to let go of the football. I'm not even sure who ended up having it. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't I don't know who had it. I think, I think Nate Walker did. I but think he did too. It was one of those things they both were, were, were grabbing. I mean, we just saw it again, you know. It, yeah, I don't know what the read is on that one. I'm, I'm guessing it's the outside linebacker or something like that. But, uh, but they're both seeing two different things. Maybe one seeing the end zone. I'm, you know, I want to say who, and and one saying, and one seeing something else. So, <laughs> maybe they're both seeing the end zone. Maybe that's the the real get up right there. And SNU uh, burns their last time out with 41 seconds to go. And Walker did slip a little bit as he yeah. was coming in motion through the timing off just enough there where there was a little bit of probably indecision on Porter of, hey, this is late. I should probably keep it. And Walker's like, I'm still here. Sure. Give it to me. <laughs> yeah, but, and these are things you can clean up in the locker room at halftime. You know, it would be different if this is something we've seen all season, but it's not. You know, it's just a timing issue or communication between them two. Uh, and you don't have time to have a conversation uh, on the field like you do at halftime. A false start or encroachment looks like on the defense. It looks like offsides on number 49, the defensive end, T.J. Harris. Looks like who that's going to be on unless the officials huddle and feel. They feel differently. One which of the it's offensive any, linemen drew that off. Anytime, anytime they huddle like that, I, it's usually not good for the offense. But uh, it looked pretty clear up here that the blitz just came a little early. Um, but Looks like it is going to be encroachment. Yeah, T.J. Harris just a little too excited to uh, disrupt the play on that one. Okay. That can happen after a timeout, though, or you know, sure, so yeah, you just you, look you, to make a play, especially right. after a forcing a loss there. So this and will help SNU be second and seven at the 23-yard line as Swasu will take a timeout. We'll take a quick timeout with them here. 41 seconds to go in the first half. Bulldogs lead the Crimson Storm 13 to seven. Welcome back. Second and seven for SNU as they are driving here at the end of the first half. 41 seconds to go. 
Porter rolls to his right, looking for the end zone. He lobs it up for Vance Hooper, who comes back. Unable to make the catch look like he would have been out of bounds yeah. anyway. Yeah, and I think if there's just a little bit more real estate, if the end zone's 12 yards instead of 10, if might all be a the touchdown. black paint is end zone, <laughs> yes. he might have been able Absolutely. to score. Absolutely. And that's not a bad read. You know, you, you want your playmakers to go make a play, and, you know, you teach your quarterbacks to throw it to the guys who you think are going to go catch it, especially in the end zone. And, uh, you know. You'll live with that. Yeah, it looked a little underthrown, which is not a bad thing in, the, mm -hmm. in that scenario to come back through the defender, maybe right. get a penalty as well. Right. Three yeah, wide outs to the left. Brady tight end to the right. Porter looking for Ramos on the screen pass. Tried to make an acrobatic one-handed catch, but was unable to do that. It will yeah. be fourth down from the 23-yard line. And into it, a stiff breeze, so this would be a 40-yard field goal for the Crimson Storm. Yeah. Again, Aguiano warming up, going south to north, knocking in 55-yarders, and it looks like SNU will leave the offense out on the field with 29 seconds left. Right. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Ramos dropping that pass was probably the best thing that could have happened, right? Even if he catches and gains a couple yards, the clock runs. But now it's stopped, fourth and seven. Porter rolling left. Throws it back across his body and a great wow. play by Devin Brady. And SNU will have to hurry to the line to spike this one. What a play. 21 seconds to go. Plenty of time for the Crimson Storm as the clock rolls. Porter spikes it with 17 seconds to go. And a really acrobatic play from Gage Porter throwing back across his body Man. as he's flowing to the left, throws back into the middle. And Devin Brady doing a nice job of just finding enough space to give his quarterback an option there. Brady's had a couple terrific catches today. Yeah, and you know, when you're good on your feet and, and you're, you know, you're able to extend the play, those initial routes that have broken down or covered well, they kind of spring open. And he extended it literally to the sideline. Um, which gave him the ability to to just drop it in there. Really, man, it looked like it looked like he was shooting a free throw almost. Uh, but the first down. 17 seconds to go. What do you see here, Landry? This is the play that they scored on Northwestern. There's the lob to Ooh. Walker, and that is yes, going to be targeting. targeting. Yep. Yeah, it's about as clear as it can get. Good thing Nate Walker hopped right back up because that's a really, really dangerous play. C.J. Jennings, it looked like, was the guilty party. Not looking for the ball at all, just went in. Helmet first on Nate Walker, helmet to helmet contact. We're going to get a very clear targeting call here, and we will not be seeing C.J. Jennings the rest of this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, two refs instantly saw it, and they're already out of there. You know, it's 27. I think will be will be ejected. And you can you can kind of tell his body language over there, or maybe 26. It, yeah. So oh, number 16. Excuse me. Their their best corner has been ejected. So we'll have to go back to the locker room, which you know you you hate it for those guys, but safety is important, and uh, it does help Crimson Storm out. They have is it the, uh, 12 seconds left. The clock is stopped. Uh, first and first and goal from the six. You, you gotta like that they at least have three chances, wouldn't you say? Three chances to to get the ball. Yeah, in the he end probably zone. got three shots at the end zone with the six yard line. So Porter, quick pass behind Brady, and it is dropped. He threw it a little behind him. He, I think he caught it twice in in the second one. It's popped Still. out of his hands when he hit the ground. Oh, it's great play design, wide open. Just kind of floated it a little bit and didn't really fire it in there as he probably should have. But mm -hmm. Brady got his hands on it, but unable to pull it in. So it'll be second and goal, 8.6 seconds showing on the clock. So again, like you said, probably got two more shots here. And then probably might be able to squeeze in a chip shot field goal. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, depending on how much time is left in this one. Ooh. And now we've got a false start on the Crimson Storm. Yeah, 
And that that's that's got to hurt, you know. You still got to take an attempt at the end zone. And you still are in field goal range, you think, you know. And since the clock was stopped, but we will not have a 10-second runoff here. Let's say that would end the half. No 10-second runoff. So now it's second and goal from the 11-yard line. Hicks coming in motion left to right. Porter looking that way. Fires it to Brady again. And again, a little bit behind him. Good coverage there on the play by Darius Franklin. And that's only a three-second play, right? So you think, you know, if you're the head coach, you're thinking, maybe we try one more. And it's risky. Uh, but if you try something similar, you know, you're you're looking at a, either a touchdown and an opportunity for a field goal. So SNU is going to try one more shot to the end zone. I would imagine it'd be another dig route, slant route, something like that over the middle, quick. Um, that if it's incomplete, you can throw it quickly. S outside routes just take just a little too much time to to get started. And not having Reed Roloffs here is huge. You would have expected at least one fade to him in this scenario. There's the fade to Brady in the corner, and it is going to be short. Picked off. And it is going to be picked off. But that's the end of the half. Unfortunate, man. So intercepted by Jalen Carr. So like you, like you said... The fade pattern to the corner just took a little bit too long to develop. So even if that had fallen incomplete, would have been no time for a field goal attempt for the Crimson Storm. But still a solid 90-yard 90, 90 drive or so yeah. burned off the last five minutes of the first half. And if, and if they had another minute, they're running the football right there. They're doing what has been Or at least have working. one timeout. Right, yeah. So, you know, there's you're frustrated that you didn't score in that play, but you've got to be really pleased if you're, if you're SNU. Right? You've got to be pleased that, uh, really, Swasi, what have they done other than, you know, your own mistakes? What have they done to slow you down offensively? They, mm -hmm. haven't, they haven't really done anything. You know? Right. Um, so, Luke, what, what do you think SNU has to do to, to get the lead and then maintain the lead? Obviously, score more points than them, but, you know. Yes, I think, I think level. scoring more will be key to winning the game. <laughs> um, no, I think, um, you know, like you said, the offense has been moving the ball pretty well mm -hmm. throughout the game. Uh, we saw a little bit more passing there on that on that drive than we had uh, throughout the game so far. But, you know, in SNU will start the ball, start with the ball in the third mm -hmm. quarter. So that will be big for them to have a, dri a sustained drive. Um, to start the third quarter, maybe wear the Swasu defense out a little bit more, uh, put them in a position where they're, you know, hands on their hips, hands on their knees a little bit yeah. um, as far as um, their endurance level. So um, a lot good opportunity here for, for SNU to, to build on that momentum from the last drive. Like you said, would have been nice to come away with p at least some points there, mm -hmm. cut down the margin. But regardless um, – you know, good good job putting pressure on the Swasu defense there at the end of the half. And we are at halftime here. Swasu leading 13 to seven. Swasu jumped out to a 13 nothing lead right off the bat on their first two or first three possessions, I should say. First possession ended in an interception. Their third, second and third possession ended in touchdowns. So SNU battled back, really controlled the half from that point on. And Crimson Storm, like we said, will get the ball to start the second half in the third quarter. So we will step aside for, for halftime. We'll come back and go over some stats and other analysis closer to second half kickoff. Again, your halftime score, Bulldogs 13, Crimson Storm 7. <laughs>
Welcome back to SNU Football Stadium. We are at halftime here. Crimson Storm trailing the Swasu Bulldogs 13-7. Uh, running through the first half stats here for the Crimson Storm. Uh, 29 plays on offense for 197 yards. 148 of those came on the ground. 90, 90 yards for Gage Porter on 12 carries. 30 for Nate Walker on two carries. And Daniel Ramos chipping in with three carries for 28 yards. Porter was 5 for 11 in the first half for 49 yards, passing two interceptions. One of those was right at the gun of the second quarter, so um, one really in consequential action. Um, for Swasu, Marcus Anderson leading the way with 35 yards rushing. Jaden Knowles had 23 yards on the ground, and Casey Freeman with 18 yards rushing. Uh, Freeman, six, just 6 of 10 through the air for 71 yards, one interception. Uh, and Landry, I think one of the big surprises for, for us is uh, just how Swasu has run the ball most of the mm -hmm. time in this one as opposed to uh, airing it out a little bit. And you, know, you kind of got to wonder if uh, J.R. Amigi's absence from this game plays a factor in that he is their leading receiver but, uh, you know, Freeman did throw for 476 yards last week in yeah. a close loss to Oklahoma Baptist. Uh, what's that done for this SNU, to this SNU defense that it's been a little bit more ground attack than we anticipated? Yeah, well, at first it seemed like it could be the worst thing. I know a few weeks ago against Monticello, Monticello ran the ball, which they hadn't done well all, all season. They ran it over and over again at SNU, and it just broke them down. Uh, but what we're seeing is SNU's adjusted well, and they're really trusting their secondary to, to do the job, right? So they're trusting the one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're, they trust their guys over uh, even um, even over some of their uh, Swasu's play action stuff and RPO stuff. They've, they've really adjusted well, and, and their run fitting, particularly in the second half, has been tremendous. Um, so, I mean, there hasn't been too many runs over five or six yards for Swasu, and much of them are less than that, um, so you have to be you have to be pretty happy if you're an SNU uh, fan, especially one who's watching the defense because they've really played well, specifically in the second quarter. So, uh, how would you how would you grade the SNU performance in the first half? Uh, let's start with the offense. 
you know, like we said, 197 yards of total offense, which is a fantastic number for the way this offense has uh, functioned this year. Um, but a couple costly turnovers, three yeah. three total turnovers in the first half, two of those uh, negating drives. The first one, a you know, killer in Swasu territory uh, with the – Sure. <laughs> um, I know you're the teacher, so you just let me know. Um, you know, first quarter is about as, as ugly as it could be. So seven plays for the offense is not, not what SNU wants. Um, and 25 plays for the defense on the field, that's, again, it's not what SNU wants. And so I would grade that just about as poor as you could. Um, but uh, for – the second quarter, I, you got to think it's just about as good as it could be. Right now, you have the you can't score a touchdown at the last. If you had another timeout, you probably scoring that touchdown. But SNU controlled the second quarter. They didn't just play well; they controlled it. Right, like Swasu was was forced into doing what SNU wanted to do, uh, offensively and defensively. And and there's no reason to not expect that the rest of the game. I know both teams are going to make adjustments, but um, Swasu has no answer for the run game for SNU. And if SNU can be on the field offensively, it's going to wear out Swasu's defense. We're going to see big plays like we saw in the in the beginning of the second quarter with Spade, or not Spade, excuse me, Porter's touchdown. So I, I would expect to see them control the game. Um, that being said, anything can happen. Swasu can, is a big play threat. You know, they, they can score at any moment. So uh, time will tell. What do you think? What would you grade him at? Oh, I'd you know probably split the difference, go with like a B minus as yeah. far as that. I think the good was a lot better than the than the bad, just because of the you know lack of time they had on the field. I think it was the biggest hindrance there in the yeah. first quarter was you know not even what they did was poor, but um, you know they just didn't have time to really do anything because of the because mm -hmm. of the turnovers. Um, defensively, uh, what did you think about uh, the performance? It seems like you know even SNU. Uh, has been a little bit surprised by the by the um, by the amount of ground attack from Swasu. You know, we've mm -hmm. seen him on the field with five and six defensive backs quite a bit mm -hmm. in the first half, and it seems like they're gearing up more to stop the pass. And it seems like that might have hurt them a little bit in those run fits yeah. early. Yeah, definitely did. Uh, I would imagine, you know, like like we've talked about, like probably some more man or cover one type. Uh, offense or excuse me defense uh, so making your corners play man to man um, and and giving your outside linebackers or you know your inside linebackers a chance to be uh, guarding those backs tightly um, and and make plays and just trusting them to do do the coverage and then stopping the run because you stop the run uh, then they're forced to pass and and SNU I think would probably be at times prefer to guard the pass than prevent the run. Absolutely. So if you can force Swasu to pass, which seems, which seems weird, but if you could force that, then that you might uh, you, you might like that better as a defense. Ryan Buchanan set to kick off for Swasu to start the second half here. Steven Gordon and Alfred Greer back at about their 10 yard line to receive this one and we're underway here in the third quarter. This one's gonna go over to Greer who fields it at the nine. Works right, finds a hole on the left side and he's got tremendous speed. Can he beat the kicker? He can! He's gonna take it all the way! Alfred Greer, 91 yards, takes the second half kickoff back for the touchdown and SNU a point after away from taking the lead. Yeah, he, uh, he has that track speed. Isn't that what they say? Man, the kicker had a good angle on him, and, and no offense to the kicker, but the angle did not matter. It was going to be a touchdown no matter what. Alfred Greer, the true freshman, takes it back to the house. What a play to start the second half here for the Crimson Storm. Zaguiano out to attempt the extra point, and with the win today, he could probably just tap this, and it would go through. Instead, he's going to put – oh, almost <laughs> – uh, Let's say he's going to put some dents <laughs> in some cars instead, but it does real hit close. just the top of the fence <laughs> before the parking lot. And just like that, SNU in the lead, 14-13, to 13, and just really terrific vision on that by Greer. Yeah. He started right, 
and then a hole opened up to the left, and he hit that yes. at full speed, and no one else stood a chance. And it looks like the play design, you know, like I'm sure that the the first the first read is just to, to follow the blocks right, which is generally on kickoff return. Most people return right; it's just more natural for the runners. Uh, but I, you know, maybe it's something they drew up in halftime. Or, but I bet you anything they practice those cutback lanes on that kickoff return because, man, Swasu committed all their guys left, and when he made that cutback, there wasn't there wasn't anyone there, and and his speed is faster than anyone else's speed. I, I, so that's got to be real. That's the second kickoff return for a touchdown this season for SNU. Their other one came in the second game of the season, the first uh, win of the season for SNU against East Central back in the home opener. So maybe a theme here for yes. home wins. That's if you right. get a kickoff return for a touchdown, when we you finish the victory. And this would be a sweet one for SNU yes. as the Crimson Storm have never beaten Swasu in the series history. Just seven games, but Swasu has won all seven of those yeah. uh, since SNU began playing the Bulldogs. And so... Getting a win against Swasu here would be a very sweet one indeed. As Aguiano has this one ready to go. And we'll see how far out of the end zone he can place this one. The high kick. No trouble there. No issue at all. <laughs> Plenty of kids down there in the end zone. Ready and waiting for some souvenirs. Except they have to give it back. Yeah. But they normally they normally don't get those bounces into onto the hill there mm -hmm. on the back side of the end zone. And so Swasu will come out suddenly down by a point, 14 mm -hmm. to 13. The Crimson Storm come out. Looks like just four defensive backs on the field, four linebackers there. The handoff is to Anderson and Big collision there with yeah. Bauer and Trenton Smith. Pick up of about three on the play. He'll bring up second and seven, but that was a major collision there between <laughs> those guys. It's a good hard run and a good hard tackle, you know, and I don't think uh, I don't think he meant to extend those extra two yards. I think just sheer momentum pushed him a couple yards further. Freeman gives to Anderson again, and it's Daniel Flynn who gets in there to make the tackle, but Anderson keeps the legs churning and falls forward just shy of the 35-yard line. It would depend on the spot, but I believe we're going to have third and about a foot. And I like okay, the and they gave him the wow. first down. The ball was not even touching the 35-yard line. Interesting. But okay. Wow. Yes. You know, it was a good play play design. You just got to keep your feet churning. If you're Flynn, he blitz off the edge right into the play. Uh, but was trying to strip the ball, and maybe next time just wraps up the tackle. Another handoff to Anderson, and he's met in the middle of the defense. Looks like Dylan Bauer was there on the initial contact. Gain of two on the play. If you're the chain gang, are you offended that you never get to be taken out for a measurement and, you know, the officials just assume a first down? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the chain, uh, you know, I, half the time they're just in the way, right? If you're the away team, <laughs> you know, so, you know, I'm grateful for those those guys who volunteer to go help, but definitely. Um, and then when you got to do a measurement, it always takes so much time. Freeman fakes the handoff to Anderson, where the keeper dives up the middle. He's going to be marked down at the 42-yard line. Yeah, Swasu coaches are wanting uh, a better spot on that, and if you're a Swasu fan watching this this broadcast, you probably are too. But for a quarterback, it's where they give themselves up, um, and and he certainly dove two or three yards before the line of scrimmage. So third and three. That's the new defense with a great opportunity to get off the field and keep the momentum going. Freeman looking right, he will check it down to Anderson, but it's rejected at the line of scrimmage by Ethan Spurlock. Batted back in his face, and that will bring up fourth down for Swasu. Terrific play there from Ethan Spurlock, as Anderson had a lot of space there in the right flat. Definitely would have picked up the first yeah. down in that oh, scenario. Yeah. So, This is where you gotta watch for, for a fake. You have to be disciplined right here. 
uh, because fourth and three, this is a definitely fake territory. Gordon, a little bit farther back than you'd probably anticipate with this punt into the wind, but it is a low knuckleballer that gets a good bounce for Swasu, and it will come to rest about the 19-yard line, and that's where the Crimson Storm will take over first and 10. So SNU keeping the momentum rolling by giving up just one first down. and A questionable first down at that. Very <laughs> questionable first down. I mean, that, that ball literally was not touching the 35-yard <laughs> line where that official was standing. Yeah. I'm not really sure how they just gave yeah, him I don't, that. I'm sure there's some kind of, you know, standard that they, they – decide those first downs by obviously the, the 10 yards but but e even in high school level you see that too you know you they'll mark the ball and you're like it's pretty close and then the guys giving the first down signal like like it's five feet past the ball or, so, or yeah. past the, the marker so I don't you know I'm not sure I'm not a ref um, but you know as a fan you're definitely uh, wondering <laughs> why the the confidence in those first downs. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no second guessing it. Mm. Which, with, yeah, as a am, more amateur ref, they always tell you, the best thing you can do is always call it confidently, regardless yeah. if yeah. it's right or wrong. So SNU comes out first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. 12-18 to go third quarter. The Crimson Storm with a one-point lead over Swasu. Nate Walker comes in motion behind Porter. To give is to Ramos up the middle. Again, more patient running from the senior. And he'll pick up five yards on first down up to the 24-yard line. Yeah, and a, and a little bit of a different look uh, for Swasu. Obviously, there's a new corner, 29, um, for Swasu. But there's also a new linebacker. Uh, Johnson Miller, the inside linebacker, number 46, who's getting his first reps today. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right as Walker comes in motion, right to left. Porter fakes the give to him. Now backtracks. Walker gets a blindside block on Kilpatrick. And he's kind of fortunate that wasn't flagged. Yeah, I know that could officials be have crackback block for sure. Um, made it a point to eliminate that as part of college football this year. But overall, that play goes for a loss of about three. It will now be third and eight from the 21-yard line. Yeah, it was well played by Swasu. I mean, it, there, was, there was nowhere to go from the start. Even with a great block, it's still nothing much. Porter keeps up the middle, nothing doing. He is wrestled down to the ground by number 49, T.J. Harris, right away. And that will be a quick three and out for the Crimson Storm, and they will have to punt. Yeah, and, it, and SNU, you know, probably just needs to talk to Porter a little bit about handing the ball off a little more. They're obviously keying up the quarterback power, quarterback run. Um, so that outside zone is really going to it's going to start opening up. It's so Ryan Reed on for his second punt of the day, and he's – Probably grateful that he gets to punt with the wind now as opposed to <laughs> into the wind that he did in the second quarter. And it looks like we are going to have illegal substitution on Swasu. Got 12 guys on the field. Probably will not affect SNU's decision to punt in any way. Yep, I would, uh, wouldn't think so. Wouldn't think so. But it brings up fourth and four now. Reed's first punt went 27 yards back in the second quarter. Again, into the win, so we'll see how far this one is able to travel. Sends it away, kind of shanks it off the side of his foot. Bounces at the 40 and gets a great hop. And goes out of bounds at about the 23-yard line is where they're going to mark that. So a 47-yard punt on a very, very nice bounce. It wasn't pretty coming off his foot, that's for sure. No, no. Did get a nice bounce, and... Does a nice job flipping the field there. So that's where Swasu will take over. First and ten. Ten minutes to go here in the in the third quarter. I must say it should be a prerequisite for all inside linebackers to have a neck roll like Dylan Metter has. <laughs> I'm very appreciative that he's they're, yeah, they're gone kinda, with that throughout the year. They're kind of disappearing. 
The handoff is to Knowles, trying to bounce it around the outside, and Miles Roll says absolutely not. Great job by Roll fighting off his block and making the tackle for a two-yard loss back at the 21-yard line. Yeah, I'm a fan of those, uh, the really high neck rolls. I'm a Cowboys fan, you know, and those are uh, definitely gone. Yeah, th there's one we we just drafted a guy from Boise State, man. He he rocked. Pass. There's a fade down the sideline for Hicks. That is incomplete, but we do have a flag. It was really late, you know. I I think the sideline probably helped out with that one a little bit. Agreed. A lot of contact over there, but didn't look like Jaquel Davis was doing anything other than shielding him into the boundary. It looks like they're going to get Jaquel Davis for pass interference against DJ Hicks. That will be the call against the Crimson Storm cornerback. Jaquel Davis, just a sophomore, has an inter one interception or two interceptions now this season, including his one earlier today back in the first quarter. The ball moves up to the 38-yard line where it'll be first and 10. Freeman fakes the give to Anderson. Option look to the right. Josh Jordan is there and slows down the receiver Rayburn. Yeah, and just enough to allow his teammates to stop him for a gain of four. Seems like Freeman, you know, he, he was a little limpy in the second quarter. I wonder if there's something bothering him because he had all the room to run and he pitched it pretty quick. So I, I don't know, maybe the confidence is gone a little bit. Two wide receivers to either side. Thomas comes in motion. Freeman fires it right over the middle to number 88. See beyond McCauley. He's right at the marker, and that's going to be a first down for the Bulldogs. Pickup of six on the play. McCauley just found a soft spot in the zone and sat down in it, and Freeman hit him right between the numbers for the first down as ball moves up to the 48-yard line. Freeman looking left quickly. High throw, but Thomas is able to bring it in. And he yeah. goes out of bounds at the SNU 44-yard line, pickup of eight. Just a simple out concept right there. Uh, creates space for that wide receiver. What a great throw, but it was a terrific fingertip catch. And SNU started to sub out Bauer and Metter, two linebackers, and Swasu countered with some heavier personnel and SNU quickly got out of the substitution. Freeman in the pocket. He's in trouble and he's going to be sacked. Zach Lloyd fought off the, def the blocks and was able to sack Freeman for a loss of three on the play back at the 47-yard line. Yeah, that's what... Uh, and now Swasu will sub out their heavier package and SNU will take Metter and Bauer off the field, going with the speedier Flynn at linebacker with six defensive backs on the field as well. Freeman takes a snap, he's back to pass. Blitz coming from Campbell. Throw down the sideline is going to be caught. Wow. By DJ Hicks, what an incredible catch right over Ja'Kale Davis. Hard to tell from this angle if he did, in fact, get a foot in, but both officials on the far side agreed he did. And that's a 24-yard reception for Hicks and a first down for Swasu. New quarterback in. Tyler Marr, backup quarterback, is in now. And he gives to Anderson up the middle, and he's chopped down by Miles Roll at the 20-yard line. Yeah, it seems like Freeman just couldn't, something with his foot or maybe his calf, it didn't look like he could really step off. Um, so we'll see if he comes back into the game, but still remaining on the sidelines right now. 
Pickup of three on the play, brings up second and seven from the SNU 20 yard line. Marr, fumble the football, and Noah Campbell comes up with the recovery at the 26 yard line. Marr had to pitch it quickly as the defender was right in his face. And as he did, it looked like the defender got a hand on the pitch. And Noah Campbell was able to fall on the loose ball for a huge turnover for the SNU defense, yeah. deep in their own territory, coming with a huge play against the backup quarterback. And SNU will take over at their own 25 yard line. Yeah, just keeping that momentum with the Crimson Storm. I mean, they couldn't ask for a better start to the first, uh, to the first, or the second half, excuse me. So the offense back on the field for SNU. Porter is flanked by Ramos on his right and Walker on his left. Walker goes in motion to the left. The give is to Ramos following the pulling Grayson Winters. And he just moves the pile forward to about the 32 yard line. Mm -hmm. Never going down, Daniel Ramos. That's right, keeping those feet moving. Keeping those feet moving. Seniors had a huge day on senior day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it may not show up in the stat uh, column, but man, he's run so hard. Um, and he's been so patient. Um, again, it was just like earlier in the first half. I mean, he's just waiting for that pulling guard to come around, and then he's just falling right behind him, getting as many yards as he can. Uh, very unselfish running. So second and three from the 32-yard line now. Walker in motion, the give again to Ramos, following the pulling right tackle, Hunter Jones. He powers ahead through another tackle for another first down for SNU. And this is something we haven't seen much from SNU this year, yeah. just traditional running with pulling guards and tackles uh, to the running back. It's, yeah. it's been a lot of quarterback run and a lot of speed sweeps to wide receivers, but more traditional ground attack here uh, with Ramos today. And this is what SNU dreams for, right? Because uh, eventually they're going to they're gonna fake to Ramos and they're going to do an end around or they're going to do a jet sweep or something. And it's going to be wide open because a Swasu has to commit to every single person in the backfield. They have three people in the backfield right now. The give is to Ramos again right up the middle. And he just continues to power. Swasu cannot bring him to the ground. Five Swasu defenders, five on the play. And the senior is really getting this crowd fired up. That's right. When is the last time, Luke, that you've seen a five-yard run get everyone in the stands to, to cheer? I mean, we're seeing something that it's like I feel like we're, you know, back in the power eye days, right? This is pretty incredible. Fans are into it. Um, Swasu's definitely not into it. They can't stop no, the No, they are not. They like, don't want any part of him. And it's also been impressive as SNU is going to get flagged for a false start here. And it's also been impressive that SNU is doing this with kind of mixing and matching personnel along the offensive line. And yeah. maybe maybe some of that is why they're able to do that. Mm -hmm. As Hunter Jones, normally the center out at right tackle, certainly a little bit more fleet of foot uh, from a pulling perspective than – uh, someone like Mark Henderson or, mm -hmm. or even Sam Perkins, uh, the injured starter from earlier this season. Yeah. So second and 10 now from the 38. Quarterback to pass. No, it's a design quarterback. Dross keeps his feet and is just dragged down uh, by number 21, Clay Wilkerson, the senior inside linebacker. Seems like he got back the yards, maybe, maybe one more, but... But man, he's been hard to tackle today. You know, yes, we he talked has. about SNU in that first quarter, um, arm tackling. Swasu is is is. You can see with the effects of being on the field for a long time. You don't want to run your body through someone, right? You just want to stick out your arm and hopefully you trip them. But when you have two hard runners like Ramos and uh, Porter, an arm is not going to bring him down. Not at all. Porter limping pretty badly on that right leg. Looked like Wilkerson kind of maybe had rolled up on him a smidge. Play clock about to expire, and we've got a timeout here for SNU. The Porter limping pretty heavily there. Hopefully that's nothing to be too concerned about, and walking it off will get the blood flowing back in there. Trey Hills would be the backup quarterback for SNU yeah. at this point. 
with Jacob Spady out for the season with a torn ACL and uh, just a little bit of uncertainty with uh, with Dylan Schmidt at at that quarterback position mm -hmm. as well. So Trey Hills would be the backup if Porter is unable to uh, continue for any reason. Um, but we've seen Porter fight through a lot of nagging injuries this year uh, in games and certainly seems like he's one to just push through a little a little limp here and yeah. keep fighting. Yeah, it's just one of those uh, bumps and bruises looks like, you know, got rolled up on a little bit. Um, Tenth game of the season, everybody's hurt. You know, that's – yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, everybody – everybody uh, – is going to get to an ice pack at the end of the day. Third and four. Porter following the block of Ramos. He is unable to pick up the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. Down at the 47-yard line. It's fourth and one. Yeah, Interesting and decision here for Coach Andy Lambert. Surely you go for it just because you have the momentum and you've been running so well. But Kilpatrick, the outside linebacker for Swasu came in and really uh, kind of blew up that play. And uh, Porter had the hole, had the seam, had the yards, uh, but one of his own guys was pushed back into him, which uh, prevented him from the first down. Porter trying for the hard count. And it looks like SNU is just going to take the delay of game penalty. and. Yeah, and, we'll punt and this one away. The fans aren't going to like that, but but it's okay. You know, you you've got a punter who can you can put out there, and you you want the clock to go down for the hard count, right? Like you're mm -hmm. wanting the defense to anticipate that you're going to snap the ball before the clock runs out. So I don't. It's not a bad play. I think sometimes when we see a flag on the field, we instantly think the worst. But sometimes it's a strategy move. Certainly, and especially since Reed ha does have the wind at his back. Right. Um, and from the 42-yard line, a good boot could put this easily inside the 10-yard line yeah. so with good coverage. So a great opportunity for SNU to really pin Swasu back deep here. Reed does send this one high. High hanger. And it bounces and takes a Swasu bounce at the 12. It's picked up there. And the returner, Jalen Carr, is going to be buried at the 16-yard line by uh, Ethan Spurlock. And that is where Swasu will take over. Um, so not the not the best result that they were looking for, but again, inside the 20-yard line, you'll you'll take that every yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Swasu, offense coming back on the field. It looks like Freeman is back out there for the Bulldogs. So whatever small injury that was, it seems to be. Okay. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Face the give to Knowles. Quick out to DJ Hicks. He's able to bring that in. Another great catch. At the 24-yard line for a pickup of eight. It'll be second and two. DJ Hicks has stepped up in a big way today with the absence of J.R. Amigi. Freeman back to pass, looking right. A lot of time, nobody open. And he hits Eddie Thomas coming back to the football at the 36-yard line. So pickup of 12 there. Nice job by Thomas working his way back to the quarterback to pick up the big gain and the first down. Jason Gully into the game at on the defensive line for SNU. Freeman back to pass again. Again, lots of time. And he just throws this one away. Great coverage downfield again for the SNU defense, yeah. which has uh, consistently been running five and six defensive backs today. And SNU pretty content to sit back and kind of spy on Freeman and force him to find an open receiver. Yeah. And if you're Swasu, typically you play with tempo so the other team can't substitute as much as they are. The SNU's really lucked out. You know, I don't know if Swasu doesn't feel comfortable with the tempo right now. They've had a lot of substitutions, which kept people fresh uh, here in the second half. 
Oh, and a terrific catch again yeah. from Derek or DJ Hicks. It looked like Derek Gillis got held on yeah. the end. He was able to take Freeman to the ground as he was throwing it yes. down the field. It and looked it, like it because he did. I think they actually literally held his hand on that play. <laughs> it was uh, he had definitely beaten the right uh, the right tackle and just a desperation grab grabbed his right arm and slowed him down. Freeman looking right. He's going deep down the sideline for Blumenthal. Good coverage from Harris, but it hit Blumenthal right in the chest and he dropped it. It's a good break for SNU there. It'll be second and ten from the. SNU 48 yard line and going back to the previous play, DJ Hicks was able to make that reception on a deflection. It looked like Jaquel Davis uh, was able to get a hand on it, but Hicks was able to adjust in midair and make the catch before the ball hit the ground. Freeman looking left, going to Blumenthal again. Back shoulder throw, and he is out of bounds. That will be incomplete. Yeah, the official's hat was down, so he had stepped out before he even caught the ball. Um, not a force out, just an incomplete pass, which is third and, third and ten for SNU. You know, it seems so funny that in the first quarter we were talking about how difficult these third downs were for the Crimson Storm, and now we're looking at a third down that really seems more manageable and seems like they could, they could force a punt right here. So third and 10 on the SNU 48 yard line. Two wide receivers to either side with Knowles to the right of Freeman. Blitz coming from SNU. And he find, Freeman finds Blumenthal right yeah, at the 35 yard line on like, a nice dig route. Yeah, it was, it was a nice route. It did look like he got a little bit of a push off there that the ref was a little late to see, but a uh, good hard throw. I mean, he put it to where only he could get it and moves the chains and ends the third quarter. So the third quarter comes to a close here. SNU holds serve. It's 14 to 13. Crimson Storm with a one point lead thanks to Alfred Greer's quarter opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Not much for either team there in that quarter, but we'll have the final stanza of the SNU home schedule right after this. In back to action here as Freeman finds Rayburn behind the defense and hits him for the 35 yard touchdown pass. Terrific adjustment on the pass in midair there by Rayburn who's able to spin and fall into the end zone. And just like that, the fourth quarter starts with SNU giving up a long touchdown pass and the lead. Extra point is up and it is good from Jackson Wilhite. Yeah, and it's frustrating to give up the lead at the beginning of the fourth quarter. It's one of those timeout plays, play action, uh, just a flood concept, and, and you sneak someone back there. And, yes, it's frustrating, but if you're, if you're SNU and if, and if you're a fan watching, your tendency when you're down, especially this season, has been to kind of deflate. But the momentum is still with SNU. Yes, Swasu just scored, but that's really the first productive thing they've done since the first quarter, you know, and – um, SNU has really controlled the game, so uh, you, you got to have some confidence that the offense is going to go out there and, and produce um, and, and get some points on the board. You know, they've been just waiting for a, a big play to happen again, like Spady's touchdown, and you know it's just right around the corner. So SNU set to receive this kickoff. 
And I would imagine that Swasu will probably be angling this one towards Stephen Gordon's side as opposed to Alfred Greer's side. <laughs> yeah, you would think so. Are they just going to say, kick or, this thing as far yeah. as you can? Or with the, the wind, zone. just try to give it, <laughs> give it a ride. Don't kick it to 28. It's like that uh, Giants-Eagles game from a few years ago where uh, – well, who was that? Uh, the uh, Giants Deshaun coach. Deshaun Jackson or Tom Coughlin. Tom yeah. Coughlin. He, said, he told the punter right before the – don't kick it to him. <laughs> and he kicked it to him, and kicked they lost. Yeah. He even drops it. He just fumbles yeah, it. Yeah. That's true. He did fumble <laughs> that, too. Yeah, oh, man. That's like the most Giants thing ever. So Ryan Buchanan will boot this one away. Again, trying to keep it away from Alfred Greer. Which sends it right at him. This one goes in, into the end zone and unable to field it and goes through the end zone for the touchback. And SNU will take over at its own 25-yard line. So SNU down 20 to 14 here. 14.52 to go in this one. And, uh, Opportunity for SNU to get back on track here with, with a solid drive. Like you said, Landry, that was, you know, Swasu's easily their best drive since the first mm -hmm. quarter. So a lot of things still moving in SNU's way right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they've got a first and 10 on the 25-yard line to the start of a new drive that hopefully will, will produce some points. Um, and I think certainly can. Walker in motion, Porter fakes to him, keeps it around the left side, and he's got lots of green grass in front of him. Can he outrun the defense to the 20, the 15, the 10, and he's forced out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Gage Porter with the keeper around the left side, goes 61 yards and nearly stole the momentum completely back. <laughs> For SNU right there. You've been waiting. You know, I feel like we've been waiting. Like, you can see the tension uh, of, of a big play like that for SNU just waiting to happen, right? Like, just five yards, five yards, five yards, five yards, five yards. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a huge play. Uh, and SNU's in a great position to regain the lead. Just 30 seconds of game time right after the last touchdown. Give is to Ramos right at the middle. He dives forward to about the 12. So it will bring up second and eight after the two yard pickup. I would imagine we will probably see a lot of running or a lot of Ramos here, or maybe even a pass or two mm -hmm. to allow Porter to get his breath back after yeah. that 60 plus yard jaunt. And Porter keeps up the middle, spins through a tackle. I believe he fumbled the football, and Jacoby <laughs> Hicks picked it up I think and took exactly it right. into the end zone. <laughs> Did he pitch it, or I don't, I don't know what happened. All I know is that Porter looks so relieved. Uh, so I'm guessing he fumbled it, <laughs> and he fumbled it right into the arms of Porter for the touchdown. Oh, man. And just like that, tie game. Unbelievable. Porter did a great job of shaking off the initial tackle. Yeah, and he I definitely fumbled. Going, he, you can see the frustration on his face as he walks on the sidelines. And almost the disbelief and joy all mixed into one emotion. So Jacoby Hicks, the senior, gets the touchdown. Johnny on the spot. And Aguiano's extra point is up. And it is good. And just like that. SNU regains the lead just a minute and a half after they had lost it. It's like we're watching Texas Tech. And now, yeah, now <laughs> we have entered into a little bit of unfamiliar territory as far as big plays swinging one way and another. Certainly something that we have not uh, experienced here at, at home games this season for no. SNU. Uh, SNU's lone win against East Central here at home. Um, was a game that they dominated start to finish. But you can see, you know, the momentum from Northwestern just swinging with this game. There's definitely some confidence. There's definitely um, some some more trust in, in the schemes that the coaches have designed. And 
it's really worked out well. Um, now, defensively, you got to bounce back from that touchdown, you know, and the touchdown for your offense helps, but uh, but getting off the field um, and not giving up third third and tens and third and fifteens and um, and getting your offense back on the field where they control the clock the rest of this fourth quarter. SNU's lone kickoff into the wind in the second quarter was a short pooch kick. It'll be interesting to see what they do now. It looks like the wind, wind is still uh, pretty strong out there, but it looks like it might have dropped off just a little bit maybe, um, at least not as consistently strong. And it looks like Swasu has adjusted a little bit as far as their alignment goes. They now have three people on that second line as opposed to just the one in the middle earlier. Aguiano set to kick this one off. He will pooch it again in about the same spot. And fair catch called for by Blumenthal at the 31-yard line. And that is where Swasu will take over. Yeah, uh, that, that kick is really nice. Now, you might, you, know, you might be watching that and thinking, just kick it deep. He's got a strong foot, even into the wind. Uh, but that thing sits up there so high, and in fact, it almost tail, tails back. Uh, because it's just sitting up there for so long, it becomes really, really hard to catch. Um, and it makes the the returner just fair catch it and just cut his losses instead of trying to get a return out of it. So Freeman on the field here for Swasu. Wide receiver either side. Two tight ends to the left. And a quick out to Rayburn, and that throw is wide and sails out of bounds incomplete. Second and 10 from the 31 yard line for Swasu. DJ Hicks lined up against Jaquel Davis over on the left side, and he's had a big day for, for Swasu. Freeman looking deep down the middle. Pass sails over Rayburn, and there's a flag thrown. Yeah, and probably probably should have been thrown. There was a this should be a hold. I don't know if they call it a pass interference, but I agree with that. Um, but and they are going to call that a hold, which makes the uncatchability of that pass. Yeah, which you mean know it's nothing. So it's good. It's only a five yard penalty, but uh, still first down. Got Noah Campbell on that one. Campbell has been asked to do a little bit more coverage, and he's limping a little bit as well. A little bit more coverage for Campbell today than he's perhaps used to. The first down and 10 at the 41-yard line now for Swasu. Freeman checks it down quickly to Anderson out of the backfield. He barrels through Ja'Kale Davis up to the 46-yard line. Mark it at about the 47. Pickup of about six on the play. We'll bring up second and four. The clock ticks under 13 minutes to go in this one. SNU with a one point lead, 21 to 20. Over Southwestern Oklahoma State, whom the Crimson Storm have never beaten. Freeman back to pass. Ryan Lara in his face. He throws it up for grabs. Jaquel Davis unable to track that one down before it sails out of bounds. And that's that's another really close to uh, uh, what what penalty am I thinking of, Luke? Grounding. Intentional, intentional grounding, yeah. I mean, he threw it well over 15 yards past his receiver. Now, I get that the route concept is there, but, but that for Freeman, you've got the SNU. Third down and four for the Crimson Storm from or excuse me, for Swasu from their own 47-yard line. Dylan Metter coming on the blitz. Quick out to Rayburn is caught. Breaks the tackle of Anthony Stevens and carries that down to the 43-yard line of SNU for the first down pickup of 10 on third and four. Gives the Bulldogs first 
down and 10 at the SNU 43 yard line. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Freeman looking to the left. Doing a fade route up to Blumenthal. Great coverage there from Dorian Harris. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see the, the difference in refereeing from sideline to sideline sometimes. You know, home sideline, <laughs> not as many flags. I, I'm, I don't want to say for sure, but I, I would guess that uh, it might be an easier pass interference call on that sideline. Certainly a lot of contact on that. <laughs> Dorian Harris doing everything he could get away with. But here, of course, Harris. Just 5'9", 150, going against Blumenthal, who stands 6'1", 200. Two wide receivers either side for Freeman, who is scanning the field and is going to check this one down to Anderson, and that sails over his head incomplete. Brings up third down and 10 from the SNU 43-yard line. Big opportunity here for SNU. Yeah, and it was still good coverage. I mean, he was open, for, or the running back was open for Swasu, but... Uh, but he would have been tackled quickly. And um, if if you are the running back, uh, you're happy that that thing sails over your head because that's a death wish, trying to jump up and catch that and <laughs> get hit in the back. Again, two wide receivers either side for Freeman. Anderson, the running back in the backfield with him. That's a new showing pressure. Noah Campbell coming on the blitz, not able to get there. Harris, another great defensive play. And again, Harris doing everything physically right. that he can to get away with no flag. A little bit of grabbing, a little bit of tugging, but terrific coverage there on Zach Hill, a guy who definitely dominates him in the size department. Hill stands 6'4", 235. He's got si height and weight on Harris, but Harris with a terrific job breaking up that yeah. pass. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, back to that, I mean, he, he – he fought, <laughs> fought for the deflection. And uh, you can't tell me that a ref uh, doesn't know that the defensive coordinator is going to chew him out if, if they throw a flag. <laughs> Bowen with a just a terrific wow. punt that is down at the one-yard line. The number 21, Rozell Young. And just terrific coverage there. Young got down there right at the pylon, and that end-over-end -end kick – just bounced straight into his hands at the one yard line. So that's two times, man. They're just terrific punts by Swasu and it's put SNU in a tough position. Last time though they were in, in their own red zone. Um, SNU drove ninety five yards and was only stopped because of time. The ball marked just inside the one yard line here. So Porter certainly needs to be a smidge cautious. Make sure he can, he or Ramos can get out of the end zone, nursing a one-point lead. And he's back to pass the tunnel screen to Brady. And Brady was stoned right at the <laughs> goal line, and he was able to get forward about a foot or two past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I Second think, and a long nine. I think uh, they're just trying to do something crafty, you know, in their own goal line, something that maybe they wouldn't expect. And the tunnel screen is definitely not what I anticipated happening. Uh, wheel route and it's pretty wide open but Porter didn't have enough time to set his feet and launch that one yeah we've we've seen ha seen Porter has a propensity for bad things happening if he just kind of wheels and throws like a short yeah. stop Ramos motions out to the left Porter fakes the screen to him and keeps it up the middle fumble the football but Mark Henderson Falls on it back at the four-yard line. Huge disaster averted there for SNU. As Porter was rocked on the play. It looked like Kilpatrick, the outside linebacker again. But SNU managed to recover the fumble at the four yard line, so it brings up fourth and seven. And Ryan Reed punting from the back line of his end zone into the wind. Gets off a squib. 
It checks up at the 30 and goes backwards to the 27 yard line and that is where Swasu is going to take over. So just not a good situation all around for SNU yeah. there with the being backed up and having to punt into the wind. Not a terrific kick in any way and they're actually gonna mark this at the 26 yard line. Yeah. So SNU's defense being called upon here to stand up and make a play. And with, with the win, Swasu very much in field goal range already that would give them a two-point lead. But SNU certainly trying to hold them to that at minimum, or at maximum, excuse me. Freeman back to pass. Wheel route to Anderson and just zoomed it right by him. Anderson, yeah. you know, more, more of a bulky bag, listed at 5'10", 215. Um, you're not probably the most likely to be catching bullets from Freeman. Yeah, and SNU very lucky that that was an incomplete pass because even though Flynn is in man coverage right there, he's he's late on that, and he catches that. There's nothing but green grass in front. Eight yard line, Rayburn in motion, and a timeout for Swasu here. The play clock was running down. Big opportunity for SNU to make a stand and force Swasu to uh, a tipped on long field goal. It would be a, about a 45 yarder from this point and certainly distance probably not as big of a factor with this wind, but you know, 45 yards is 45 yards mm -hmm. at, at this level and you know, certainly not a, not a gimme field goal. So if SNU can hold strong and you know, for no gain or short gain, uh, or even a loss, you know, that would be certainly a good thing for the defense. Yeah, yeah, man, especially <laughs> giving up your, giving up the ball in your own 26. I mean, you couldn't ask for a worse position to start from. Um, and now they're in a position to uh, potentially force a really difficult field goal for Swasu. Um, so third downs have been the Achilles heel of the SNU defense today. And um, so I'm, I wonder... I wonder um, how they'll do. I, I would imagine that if you're Swasu, you're running curl routes right here. Get to the sticks. SNU with six defensive backs on the field for this third and 12 from their own 28 yard line. Freeman going fade route up the corner and Ja'Kael Davis all over Eddie Thomas Jr. Terrific coverage once again from the SNU corners. And you, and, you know, like, we've seen a lot – the corners play well all season, right? But I don't know that I've seen them play this good, this consistently all season. I mean, there's been one bust uh, for a touchdown and everything else they've kept in front of them or they've deflected. I mean, their hands have been active. Uh, they've played really, really well. Every catch is a very competitive contested catch for Swasu. Buchanan's field goal is on the way, and it is good from 45 yards out. Ryan Buchanan gives the Bulldogs a two-point lead, 23-21. Swasu regains the lead over the Crimson Storm, 8.38 to go. And this is shaping up to be a fantastic finish. We've it's been back and forth all day, big plays on both sides, um, you know, methodical clock-controlling drives on both sides. So turnovers on both sides yeah it's really been about as even of a matchup as we've seen all year Landry yeah yeah and it I think a lot a lot of it has to do with SNU is playing up to their capabilities you know you hate to just talk about their capabilities you just hate you hate to talk about potential but when you see potential that's when momentum starts to build especially for a program you know we talked about this at the beginning of uh, our broadcast today that that two wins in the next two weeks is a really, really good thing for SNU. In fact, it's it's probably the best thing. Obviously, winning is the best thing, but uh, but you can see that with with when they meet their potential, they're a really good football team, and they're a football team who battles. So you think about it, Swasu scored 13 in the first quarter and has been held to 10, and been outscored 21 to 10 from from now or from the second quarter to now. Which is an interesting script flip mm -hmm. for how the season's gone because SNU's right. been right there in the first half. You look at the cumulative scoring for the year, they've been right there in the first half. It's the second half that's killed them as the kick sails deep. Alfred Greer 
Fields it at the five yard line and you just hear the buzz in the crowd as he hits the hole. And a flag flies in from the umpire there. He takes it out to the 39 yard line. Looks like it could be a face mask. You know, they might've gotten a hold, but uh, it was hands close to the helmet, but what do I know? We'll see what the indication is. They're looking for a number from SNU, so it looks like yeah, it's going to be a hold. I would imagine it was a hold or a block in the back. It is going to be on SNU, and that'll put the Crimson Storm 10 yards back from where Greer ended up. Looks like they're going to mark this off from the 36-yard line, so that'll be first and 10 for SNU from the 26 yard line so certainly not bad field position but certainly could have been better and yeah. didn't you just love the buzz in the crowd as soon as oh, Greer yeah. caught that everyone everyone was anticipating a touchdown and I'm, I don't, can you blame him I mean his speed is is pretty remarkable you it's one of those speeds you can tell I mean as soon as he gets it give us to Ramos more patient hard running for the senior fights his way for yeah. two yards and this is where SNU wants to be. Eight minutes left. They've got the ball. And they have the opportunity to drive down the field and at least put it in field goal range. Um, and and, and they're, they're not pressured by anything on the clock, which is great. Again, pretty much the same personnel all game long for the Crimson Storm as far as skill positions go. Fakes the give to Walker around the right side. Porter carries up ahead for about one to the 30. It's going to bring up third and six. Brady, Walker, Hooper, Hicks, and Ramos have basically gone the distance for SNU from a skill position standpoint. Greer was in the game for one play in the first quarter. He fumbled a pitch. And that's, that's really been it for SNU mm -hmm. as far as personnel goes on offense. Porter sends Walker out to the left. And the pass is intercepted by number 43, Dalton Cooper. The sophomore outside linebacker from Tuttle just undercut the out route. And Gage Porter, I believe he was looking for Vance Hooper on that route yeah. and just did not put enough on that and didn't put it high enough and yeah. know, just kind of made a poor decision there throwing into that coverage. Yeah, it looked like a football that, that should have been thrown out of bounds, you know, lived to fight another day. Um, but Swasu, a, a great field position again. In the defense, this is the, they're running the same issue that we had in the first quarter. They're on the field a bunch, you know, and – um, they've got to get off the field. Even though they held them to a field goal last time, um, a three and out would, would be a great thing. Late substitution for Swasu. And, and that's going to result in a delay of game penalty because of the late personnel change. Yeah. So that will set them back five yards. And the Swasu coaches are going to hate that because the ref, any substitution, is going to come out and, and stop and give the defense the ability to substitute. Uh, which doesn't stop the play clock, and and they're going to be frustrated that the ref was not letting them snap it, but it's it's really of their own doing that that delay of game happened. So first and 15 now from the SNU 44-yard line. Swasu with an with an opportunity here to extend the lead with seven minutes to go in this one. We give us to Anderson right up the middle, middle. Excuse me. He powers forward for five down to the 41-yard line and gets those penalty yards back. It'll bring up second and ten. Two wide receivers either side for Freeman, who has Anderson to his right. Freeman thought about pitching it, but 
Some missed tackles in the backfield. And Freeman is able to pick up four, which is going to bring up a third and six. <laughs> got a little bit yeah, of uh, flopping. flopping and pushing and shoving. And this is the NBA. I guess he'd get, a, he'd get fined. Yeah, huh? Rayburn <laughs> looking like he's run our test or something up there flopping around. <laughs> The third and six from the 35-yard line. Big opportunity here for SNU. Probably four down territory if you're Swasu. Freeman thought about going down the middle. And it's knocked away by Trenton Smith. Pass was intended for 87, Alex Ramirez. It's going to bring up fourth and six and a little bit of decision time for for Swasu. And don't be surprised. Oh, would, they're going. Uh, yeah, they're going for it right here. Taking out the heavy personnel and two two wide receivers. I wouldn't be surprised if you just see a hard count right here. Um, however, Swasu has had has been really effective on fourth down. So huge play here for the Crimson Storm. Clock at 5:37. Freeman looking left. Pressure by Gillis. The pass nearly intercepted by Josh Jordan, but it falls incomplete. That's right. And the SNU defense holds. Man, great job by the defense and great job not catching that interception because no that, that would have only hurt the Crimson Storm. So, man, good job. And the offense now has some momentum, has the ball on good field position with five minutes left. Is this not eerily similar to the end of the first half? Absolutely. Five and a half minutes to go, first and 10 from the 35-yard line for SNU. Uh, considerably better field position than the end of the first half. Yes, though. yes, absolutely. But about, about the same time on the clock. Different score, obviously, but, uh, but definitely uh, an opportunity. Porter just throws it deep for Walker in double coverage, and the pass is intercepted by Jalen Carr, his second pick of the day. And just a terrible decision yeah. there, throwing into double coverage. To a short wide receiver. To the, yeah, to Nate Walker, who is not going to win many jump ball battles at 5'7". And that that looked almost like a makeup play for Porter. Yeah. He's like, I have not given the ball to Nate Walker enough today, so I'm going to appease him by throwing a deep ball to him. Sure. And Jalen Carr, though, made a sensational interception yes yeah uh, and just reached right over the top of it Walker and plucked it right off his head yes and it wasn't like Nate Walker didn't have an opportunity it wasn't it wasn't a terrible throw it's the decision that was the issue yes you, know, you just can't throw a, a fade route into to clear cover two so Swasu back on the field that's the fourth interception for Porter today yeah, false you got a false start on the left tackle right here went just a hair early which helps SNU and something that's kind of interesting is that it seemed like SNU's primary success offensively came when Hunter Jones was at right tackle and Joey Kirion was at center. But the last three possessions, it's been the Jones at center and Mark Henderson at right tackle combination. Mm -hmm. Something to it's kind of been interesting to see. Yeah, and you know we don't, you know we're not we don't know the schemes as well as obviously the coaches do. So there could be. Could be busts, could be missed blocks, missed reads, or something like that uh, that would prevent them from going with what what we've seen as kind of the successful lineup. Anderson stretching it left, slips down trying to make a cut, and he slips down right at the line of scrimmage, so it will be second and 15. And uh, for SNU, probably need to prepare for a heavy dose of Marcus Anderson here, who's been uh, another workhorse today. Yeah. He's been on the field the majority of the time, uh, leading rusher, Jaden Knowles, who came into today uh, 306 yards on the ground, um, has not seen the field much since the first quarter, really, as Marcus Anderson has carried the brunt, done the brunt of the work for the Bulldogs. Two wide receivers to the left, tight end either side, and Anderson in the backfield. Freeman rolling to his left, looking back over the middle. He's in trouble. And SNU gets there and takes him down for a four-yard loss back at the 14-yard line. And terrific you coverage down the field for the Crimson Storm and terrific pressure flying to the football as well. Ryan Lair was there, Ethan Spurlock was there, and Daniel Flynn there as well. Yeah, and you know the secondary coach is 
is yelling. That's a coverage sack, and it really was. I mean, the coverage was great. They ran a double move on, on the outside, kind of a post and go, and uh, and there was there was no room uh, for Freeman to make any kind of pass. Third and 18 from the 14-yard line. Stacked receivers either side. Freeman back to pass. The shovel pass to Anderson, and that goes absolutely nowhere. Might have even lost a yard. And that's going to bring up fourth down from the 13-yard line as SNU will take their second timeout of the half. And it leaves them with just one, but 3.51 to play. SNU down two. 23-21, the Bulldogs in front. Excuse me, yes, that is going to be SNU's second timeout of the half. So big stop there for the SNU defense again with uh, their backs up against the wall after another turnover on offense. SNU being in this game, just down two, I mean, they have five turnovers today. Yeah. It, it hasn't seemed like no, it. Just it definitely with some hasn't. of the success they've had offensively. Mm -hmm. um, but five turnovers is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, that's one of those things. It's like you you does you don't you don't prepare for turnovers. In fact, you you obviously want to avoid them. But uh, five turnovers. If you win, you can kind of say, "Oh man, we had five turnovers. We could have won by this much." But if you lose, you say, "We had five turnovers. We should have won." And you don't want to be saying, "We should have." So. SNU is incredibly lucky to have one more drive uh, to go win this ball game. Bowen back to kick, who's been terrific today. Gordon back deep. The ball checks up at about the 45-yard line, and it's going to roll down down to about the 41-yard line. That's yeah. where Swasser will touch that down. So 3.37 to go. SNU just needing a field goal for the win here, which would be their first over the Bulldogs. Uh, in this series history. Again, Swasu has won all seven previous matchups between these two schools. So plenty of time, plenty of um, real estate in front of them for SNU. Uh, really, at this point, Landry, it's about execution and making smart decisions. Yeah, yeah, you can't have, you can't have any more turnovers. That's, that's no question. There's no recovering from a turnover right now. Um, if you're SNU, do, do what has worked. So you know Swasu's going to load the box. You know that they're going to try to make you pass the ball because it hasn't worked very well for you to pass the ball in the second half. Uh, but do what works. You have three minutes, 37 seconds left. You can still get on the ball. You can still get in field goal range. You have a great kicker. Do what works. Great blocking in front. Nate Walker's got speed down the sideline. Just forced out of bounds by number 39, Gerald White. There is a flag on the play. I believe the umpire is going to get a hold here on SNU. It'll still be a first down, but uh, it's really going to be about a gain of gain of three instead of a gain of 20. And it is going to be an illegal block in the back. So they'll mark that off from the Swasu 46-yard line. So that will put the ball at the SNU 44, so it's going to be first and seven. Negating what was a terrific play to Nate Walker, who and the clock is running, burst through the some blocks and got down the field quickly. And just as we were mentioning on that last possession, the offensive line combinations, carry ons at center, and Hunter Jones is out at right tackle. Porter looked like a little bit of a broken play trying to get to the outside, and he's finally smacked down at the 49 yard line by Clay Wilkerson. Yeah, it was definitely a designed quarterback, you know, kind of counter or, or power of some kind. Uh, but what looked like it probably should have hit inside, kept stretching outside, but still a good gain. Two minutes, 48 seconds left. What do you think, Luke? 25 for field goal, get to the 25 yard line? Or you the gotta be closer than that? The wind has definitely died down. 25 would be about a 42 yarder. So I'd you know, probably try to get to the 20. Porter, bubble screen out to Brady, who will pick up the first and down. get out of bounds, yeah. That's a great play, even though that, that's only five yards. Maybe 
Yeah, you s nope, no running the clock. Didn't get out of bounds. Well, Did not still. Get, quite get out of bounds. But still first, first and down. ten at the 46-yard line. <laughs> I told you, I, I only get about one right estimation a week. <laughs> so. SNU with one timeout remaining, clock ticking down to two minutes. And definitely not a ton of urgency here for SNU at this point. Porter rolling to his right, fires an out pattern to Walker, and he was in bounds. You know. Oh, and here comes. Okay. I thought the field judge was going to overrule that and say uh, he was out of bounds. But I thought he was too, but they for, definitely have a better perspective on this sideline. You know, we got people blocking us, but I thought his both his feet seemed uh, like they're on the way. Yeah. Nonetheless, so pickup of eight, and he did get out of bounds, so that stops the clock with 155 to go. Ball's now on the 38-yard line of Swasu. Hicks goes in motion to the left, so three to the left, one to the right. Fakes the bubble screen to Walker. Porter goes right up the middle. He's got nothing but grass in front of him. He's going to take it all the way for the touchdown. Gage Porter faked the bubble screen to Walker, and he rumbles 38 yards right up the middle of the defense for the touchdown. Man, it was an incredible play. They've been running the bubble screen. Coming drive. I was just I was just about to say, and because of the touchdown, you don't have to, you know, look at the chart for <laughs> to go for two or not here. But uh, maybe they are gonna go for two. I'm not really sure why you would. Again, yeah. Swasu need, will need a touchdown either way. And you've got but the the, the offense is coming on the field. back on the field. You know, I, I'm guessing you, you bank on the fact that they might miss a field goal. You know, you go for two just because of four, you know, four and five, it makes no difference. Right. Six makes a difference potentially. Um, but, yeah, would I have used a timeout for it? I I don't know. I don't think so. Porter rolling right, the th looking for the throwback to Brady, who managed to catch it, and he fights his way back into the wow. end zone, being held. Wow, what a play by Brady, who managed to look like he caught that just over the plane of the goal line. Yeah, unbelievable. So his momentum carried him out, but that didn't matter as the far line judge ruled that as a good, good two-point conversion regardless of anything after that. So SNU does convert the two-point conversion, making it 29-23 to with 1.46 to go here in the ball game yeah and again just just a really even exciting matchup here today uh between two pretty evenly matched teams landry yeah absolutely and uh you know I, i'm peeking at the crowd again no one's left you know everyone's still here still watching this game and they got the full price of admission today that's for sure in snu football that price of admission always a great deal if you're looking for good things to do with your family right. on the weekends that's right if you're in bethany and you're watching this youtube broadcast come watch it live you know there's there's no reason to listen to luke and i absolutely although we would encourage you if you're not in the crowd at the sawyer center this year to tune in on this live stream as well we'll be calling all the games here for you and uh, in conference play we'll be even calling all the road games with our sports information director james hill on the call on the road games i'll be handling all the home games this year Zaguiano will boot this one deep. No one back there. It hangs up, and it will get through <laughs> the end zone for the touchback. So, Aguiano showing off the leg into the wind, which, again, has died down a little yes, bit from absolutely. the first half. Uh, no way that would have happened in the first half with the way the wind was whipping around. But which is uh, really nice bounce there, too, yes. just behind the pylon. Oh, man, I know. That's a, that's a difference between – that's 10 yards right there, that, that one-yard bounce. But um, – so the, the win has died down, which is was great for SNU on that drive. I think it's going to be great for SNU on this drive, too. You know, that's Swasu's kicker. Although he did hit a long field goal in the last drive, he hasn't proven to be the most consistent kicker. Mm -hmm. And now he doesn't have the aid of a strong win behind him. Uh, so we'll see. First and 10 for Swasu, and SNU football stadium is loud here. Two wide receivers right, two to the left. Freeman. Double clutch is going for Thomas, and it's going to be intercepted by Anthony Stevens. 
What a play! Stevens coming over from his safety position. Makes a tremendous interception right on the sidelines. Just got his foot in bounds. And I, I think about just about every red shirt has tackled him on the sideline. I don't know if Swasu's getting that ball back anytime soon. What an incredible play for Anthony Stevens and this SNU defense, which has had a bit of an up and down day, but consistently has made the plays when they've needed to. None bigger than that one right there. And wow. the SNU offense has an opportunity to put this one on ice. And you could just tell when Freeman threw that football that something was off about it. Kind of a duck tail through the air and was an incredible interception. Porter will give to Ramos. Who else? The senior fighting for yards. It looks like he'll pick up about one and Swasu will burn their second timeout. With 133 remaining. Another timeout, so regardless of what happens as far as down and distance, SNU will be able to take this down well under 30 seconds, right. I believe, by the time they have to give up possession if they were unable to get a first down. So great opportunity here for SNU to put this one away. Yeah. Of course, the first down would absolutely seal the deal for the Crimson Storm, but uh, with even without that, with Swasu only having one more timeout remaining, things look pretty bleak over on the Bulldog sidelines. And um, it looked like a double move on that, where yes. Freeman was kind of uh -huh. just waiting on somebody to move upfield. And Thomas certainly had gotten behind the corners, but Stevens did an excellent job coming over the top to make that interception. Because uh, if he had not been there, Thomas had a lot of space to, sure. to work after he made that catch. Yeah, you know, he's, you know, for a throw like that, you you got to put it in between. It's kind of a safety beater throw where you just zoom it in there as fast as you can, and you put way too much air under it. It's easy for the safety to come over and make Ramos the play. Ramos right up the middle, and he's going to be stopped just short of the first down at the 42-yard line. So it's going to bring up third and two, 128 to go. Well, if you're uh, – if you're calling the play, Luke, who are you giving it to? Oh, Walker, I'm giving it to Ramos right Ramos. up the middle. You know, this again, this this combination on the offensive line we've seen all day, I think has been more successful in this aspect. Sure. With the power yeah. run game, with the running back. Um, you know, I think has they they've just been more successful for yeah. for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, Jones versatility on at right tackle, being able to pull, um, you know, basically having some, a lot more nimble guys up front. I think we've been able to see that this, this offensive line combination was able to get the job done in between the tackles a little bit yeah. more than when uh, Mark Henderson was at right tackle and Jones was at center. Yes. And again, that's nothing, certainly nothing against Mark Henderson. He's played really well today uh, at right tackle, being called on you know, these last couple weeks in dire circumstances because of injuries. But... Um, you know, this combination that's out there right now with carry on at center and Jones over at right tackle has just gotten the job done a little bit more. So third and two, Ramos to the left of Porter. Walker goes in motion to the left, and it's going to be Porter calling his own number, bullying his way forward, and he's going to be stopped short at the 41-yard line, so the clock will continue to move. And it looks like okay. SMU will be able to take this down to about – 35 seconds or so before they have to make a fourth down decision or do anything on fourth down. And you obviously will take let this run all the way out and take the delay of game penalty. Yes. I mean, do you go for it? Do you try to ice it right here? I mean, do you you do something like that? Well, I mean, if you're going to go for it, you need to run the play. Right. Because you, can't, you wouldn't take the delay of game. I guess then, that's true. Then go for it. So it looks like they're just going to take the delay of game penalty and leave it on their defense to – Shut down Swasu one more time. 36.8 seconds. Missed it by a second and a half. So 36.8 seconds on the clock now as SNU will take the delay of game penalty. Pushes it back to the 46-yard line as Ryan Reed will come on to kick and try to pin Swasu back deep. Again, Swasu, no timeouts remaining. They do need a touchdown and the extra point in order to pull this one out. And you got to believe that 
Swansea will be bringing the house here. Yeah. Yeah, you're not doing this punt block. no safe pun on this one. Reed takes the snap. A nice high hanging punt. Carr will have to take the fair catch at the 10 yard line. Beautiful punt there. Probably five second hang time or close to it. I mean, yep. the play started at 38 and ended with 30. I mean, tremendous. It couldn't ask for a better punt than that. Absolutely. Great job by Ryan Reed coming up with his best punt of the day when they needed it most. So SNU 30 seconds away from their first winning streak of the season and their first win over Swasu ever. They lead the Bulldogs 29-23. And you know this secondary, all six defensive backs on the field right now. Yeah, plus some. Looking to shut down the Bulldogs one last time. Freeman takes the snap, he's looking to the right. And it's oh. gonna be intercepted, Ja'Kale Davis. He takes it to the house, and that is going to be it. What a way to finish for the Crimson Storm. Think they go for two here? Just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> I don't know. You probably want a full 14-point margin here, don't you? That's right. Yeah, if it's high school football, you're trying to get those 15 points. <laughs> they really are actually going for two here. Oh, okay. Except Gage Porter doesn't know that. No, he sure doesn't. There he goes. <laughs> Gage Porter. Yeah. Everybody is set on offense except for Gage Porter. He's going to take a running snap here. Or they're <laughs> just going to take a snap delay it before game he's set. That would... That was sensational. <laughs> Is there the entire offense was set and the quarterback was not on the field? <laughs> you never see that again. <laughs> no, I've never seen that. Uh, period. All right, Luke, you're gonna have to help me understand why you'd go for two. Um, I couldn't. Is it have anything? I mean, I guess my my thought would be it has something to do with conference standings, winning by 14. I my only thought would be you get to run another offensive play and it's another live game rep. You know that you can mm -hmm. practice for next for next week, and you know you've got all the you've got all the confidence in the world right now of with your team and what you've been able to do these last two weeks. So, yeah, I guess it's just another another live game rep. You know, fourteen. I guess fourteen points. If somehow they score on the kickoff, go and they onside, you're making them yeah. score two touchdowns. I don't. I mean, I guess it it's a safe bet, which. But yeah. I don't know that it matters. Lambert, Coach Lambert probably has all the freak things that could happen memorized. Yes, yeah. Except I bet you I bet you next year he has what if your quarterback doesn't run out on a two point conversion? <laughs> yeah. What if your quarterback Who do you put in? <laughs> is not on the field for a snap. <clears throat> so SNU in dramatic fashion going to get their first win over southwestern Oklahoma State going to be their third win of the season their second win here at home and it's going to be a very very confident bunch going to Shawnee next week to take on Oklahoma Baptist in the season finale as Aguiano tees this one up one last time for today Blumenthal muffs the kick and falls forward to the 29-yard line, and, and that's he, where Swasu will attempt a miracle. Yeah, and that, that kickoff was symbolic of Swasu's last two minutes of this game. I mean, just we're, we're up by two, two points, and, and now it seems like SNU has just dismantled them in just yeah. two minutes of football. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, you know, the last, like you said, the last two and a half minutes, been touchdown drive, interception, mm -hmm. pick six. And they are just going to hand this one off to Marcus Anderson. And 
That clock is going to stop with the first down. As the clock moves with the chain set, this should be the final play of the game. And another handoff to Anderson right of the middle, and it's Ethan Spurlock with the final tackle, and that'll do it from SNU Football Stadium. Final score, the Crimson Storm come out with a thrilling and dramatic 35-23 win over Southwestern Oklahoma State. Crimson Storm moved to three and seven this season in overall and in conference play. And it's the first win for Southern Nazarene over the Bulldogs of Southwestern Oklahoma State. Series now stands at one and seven. Uh, Landry, what, a, what an exciting game. Yeah. I mean, even throughout, mistakes both ways, big plays both ways. Um, you know, it, it'd be, you'd be hard pressed to find two uh, more evenly matched teams in the conference. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there were there were moments I think for for both teams where you thought, uh, yikes, it, this one might get ugly. You know, SNU returns that opening kickoff return for the second half, and I, I'm thinking, and I even mentioned it on the air, like SNU is in control of this game. Then all of a sudden, Swasu uh, has two drives that lead to ten points, and and they're in control of the game. They're, uh, but. The last two minutes of the game, often in close games with close teams, is a deciding factor. Uh, very rarely is there not something crazy happen in a, in a game like this in the last two or three minutes. And SNU um, proved to have the toughness, to have the grit, to finish out this game, and to make the defensive plays necessary uh, to, to win this game. And we haven't hardly talked about the pick six. I mean, I know it happened, and we I know we saw the touchdown, but... It's a pretty incredible catch and return. He's bobbling it halfway down the sidelines, mm -hmm. and he still returns it. Uh, so definitely some of the, the cleanest football that we've seen defensively from SNU. Now offensively, like we said, uh, five turnovers. Um, and five turnovers, you can look, on, look at on film for SNU tomorrow and say, oh, man, well, if we wouldn't have had five turnovers, we would have won by a lot. But now they don't have to say uh, we shouldn't have had five turnovers. So. Um, you know, those are things that with Porter, when he – more maturity, less of those are going to happen. But, um, Luke, what were some things that stuck out to you about um, this really, really pivotal win for the Crimson Storm today? Well, I think, I think you know, going back to just the confidence level, uh, it was so much more evident um, than we've seen all season. You know, after – especially, you know, we were talking to you just after that Monticello game where – you know, there just didn't seem like there was much momentum or, you know, much direction as far as the offense went. Um, you know, but then today, just a completely different animal, and it's amazing what um, really one one quarter of football can do for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you look back at the fourth quarter of um, last week's game against Northwestern, and, you know, really SNU will probably be able to point to that as, um, you know, kind of a turning point for, yeah. for their season. Um you know, I mean, regardless of the turning point being just for the last three games, but it's still, you know, a turning point that allowed them to you know, create a lot of momentum, come up with a big win today, and have a ton of confidence uh, going to Oklahoma Baptist. And, you know, year to year, that that's huge for this, mm -hmm. for this program. That's, you know, still growing, still uh, trying to get acclimated to uh, Division II and still making those strides under uh, Coach Lambert and – you know, I think that 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 seeing the confidence in person today was um, not necessarily shocking, but it it was pretty cool to see, mm -hmm. given how you know defeated everyone seemed yeah. here to here three weeks ago after yes. the Monticello loss. Absolutely, it's quite the turnaround. I mean, you get, we're watching the huddle right now, and and not only the players look uh, like there's some tension off their shoulders, but you can see it in the parents and the fans. Um, instead of a, a tense kind of emotional huddle, uh, the emotion has swung, the pendulum has swung, and, and there seems to be some joy in the program. And, and that's how you want to end your season. You want to end um, with players not thinking about, oh, man, it was such a long season, but thinking, man, we played we played our best football at the end of the season. What if we'd have played that way at the beginning? Um, so lots of things for SNU to really hang their hat on especially the last two games, uh, tremendous win today. And I thought, you know, out of all the games, Luke, you and I have watched, this is their best 
best game for four quarters. Um, even Northwestern, even though they won last last week, they they uh, didn't play their best game for four quarters. They played it uh, really like a quarter and a half. But four quarters of great football, um, which is something to build on. First win against Swasu, you got to be proud of that. I mean, Absolutely. Seven years of getting beat by those guys, you know, I'm sure they're great guys. But, but still, getting a win against a team you haven't ever beat is, is a good thing. Well, and you just look at you look at the history of this series um, yeah, as a very small indicator of uh, just the progress SNU's made. You know, in 2015, SNU went to Weatherford and lost 73 to seven. You know, two years ago here, lost 35 to 14. Last year there, lost 20 to 17 on a walk-off blocked field goal that would have tied the game. And now here you are winning the game. I mean, if if that four-game stretch for in, in just this series doesn't um, kind of uh, exemplify the progress that SNU is making as a program. I'm not really sure what else would. Mm-hmm. So very, very cool uh, to see that. And, you know, as you you know, are looking at the post-game huddle there, um, you know, the attitudes are so much different and, you know, a lot of excitement amongst the players. You know, two, you know three weeks ago, dead silence. No, yeah. mu- no music playing, nothing happening. It was just Coach Lambert trying He's to build talking. his guys up, and, and now it's one thing I, I noticed and laughing and cheering. And it's, it's crazy. Look how much closer all the parents are. Usually, it's kind <laughs> of an awkward distance between parents and players, but you can't. Some sometimes I can't even tell wh- which one's a coach and which one's a parent. So obviously, uh, <laughs> there's a different vibe. Uh, winning cures a lot of pains, Luke. It does. Winning cures a it lot really of pains. It really does. Uh, let's run through some of the post-game stats here. Um, you know, and this this game really kind of also exemplifies the the impact that Gage Porter can have on on this team, um, and both good and good and bad, right. yeah. if you will. Um, you know, it, the sophomore is he's he's growing. He mm-hmm. is he the difference in this game from previous games is evident, and uh, the stats kind of bear that out as well. Um, <laughs> Passing Porter ten of eighteen for eighty yards and four interceptions. And you're like, ugh, yeah. that's not that's not good. But rushing the ball, twenty three carries, two hundred and five yards and two scores. Um, had the sixty one yard touchdown run in the first half, and then the forty yard touchdown run to clinch uh, the go ahead score there. Just huge. And then, you know, individually, you had Daniel Ramos, the senior. 11 carries, 63 yards, uh, and, you know, a big key with, especially with running backs, it, it, as far as effort is concerned, you know, when your yards gained is the same as your net yards, no lost yardage, That mm-hmm. that's a sign that you're running hard, and that yeah. was the case for Ramos today. No negative carries at all for him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just really showed out on senior night tonight. Yeah, he played hard. Uh, receiving, Devin Brady caught eight of – Porter's 10 passes, eight catches for 59 yards. He caught the two-point conversion there at the, um, you know, there to put the Crimson Storm up 29-23. And, um, you know, Jacoby Hicks with the statistical anomaly of having gained seven yards rushing with a touchdown but no official carries right. due to the fum- recovered fumble that Porter had there in the <laughs> there no, in the fourth quarter. Or was it a pitch? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? No one will ever know. <laughs> So that's for SNU. Defensively, SNU just so many so many good things to to look at. Miles Roll led the team with 12 tackles again. Uh, a couple sacks from a couple different guys. Flynn, Campbell, and Zach Lloyd all were able to uh, to get one there. And then as far as interceptions go, Jaquel Davis had two of them. The and then the 26 yard interception return for a touchdown that sealed the deal. And Anthony Stevens with the with the clinching interception as well on the previous possession. Um, which was just uh, just w- really cool to see. Uh, for Swasu, offensively, Freeman was just 17 of 36 for 209 yards, one touchdown in those three interceptions. And this uh, just a week after he threw for 476 yards against right. Oklahoma Baptist. Just really shows you the the um, you know the pressure that SNU can put on your passing game with this secondary. Um, you know they had the three sacks. And if they had, you know, we're running more blitzes or three-man fronts, it would have been a heck of a lot more than that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely would have been more than that because there were times where Freeman was just camped back there in the in the backfield for 
six, seven seconds looking for someone to throw or trying to do anything. Yeah. Uh, it just was – there were no open guys downfield. DJ Hicks led um, – Bulldogs in receiving, five receptions, 82 yards. Rayburn finished with four catches for 71 yards. Thomas, two catches, 20 yards. And Rayburn did have the long 35-yard touchdown pass to start the fourth quarter as well that gave Swasu the lead. Uh, as far as rushing goes, Marcus Anderson, 15 carries, 78 yards. Knowles had 11 carries, 28 yards, excuse me, 22 yards. Did have those two scores in the first quarter. We didn't really see much of him after uh, after the first quarter. Knowles had uh, one carry in the second half as Anderson mm. carried the bulk of the load in the second half. Freeman finished with 19 yards rushing on nine attempts. Um, and then, of course, the big fumble for Swasu as well from, from Tyler Marr there in the uh, fourth quarter as well. As far as uh, the interceptions go, Jalen Carr had two of them, uh, Cooper had one, and uh, Jennings had one in the first quarter before he was ejected for targeting in the in the second quarter. Jennings did run that one back 29 yards. So um, again, like we like we've talked about, overall a very very even game, very back and forth game. Um, you know what what stood out to you as the biggest key for SNU's win today? Uh, yeah, they well they had momentum and they had rhythm and they played like they could win the game and you know I mean even you think to Monticello it wasn't out of reach you know uh, for a lot a, lo a big portion of the game but it definitely felt like they thought it was out of reach and um, and today even when SNU got down on several occasions uh, there was something in the air that that they still had a chance and they still could make something happen so um, kind of as a scapegoat answer I think they, they actually believe that they could win you know, and that makes a big difference. It makes you block better. It makes you do all those little things, those intangibles. Um, but I think defensively, the most, the probably the most tangible thing you could say is that defensively they played probably their best game they've played all season, um, and and that helped them stay in the game and win the game. What do you think, Lou? Absolutely, Com I you know I completely agree. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what the what next week holds. You know, the season finale, an opportunity to match. Last last season's win total, something that we never would have really dreamed about three weeks ago, uh, watching that performance against Monticello. And, you know, here they are potentially to end the season on a three-game winning streak and finish 4-7 for, for the second straight year, which would be a yeah. huge accomplishment uh, for this Crimson Storm program. So uh, that's that's going to do it for us today. Uh, again, the final score, 35-23. to SNU gets their first win over Swasu and their second win in a row. They wrap up the season next week in Shawnee against Oklahoma Baptist. Uh, that kickoff is set for 2 p.m., I believe. And uh, the Crimson Storm will, again, look to end the season on a three-game win streak. Uh, that's going to do it for us this season. As far as our roles as calling calling games for SNU, Landry, we've had a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, it's been great. So we look forward to being back with you next season, hopefully, if they'll have us back. And uh, But for now, you can tune in uh, on the same um, – same methodology and listen to us for uh, SNU basketball games as the SNU men look to be ranked in the top 10 to start the season. It should be a very exciting year for the Crimson Storm on that side and Coach Adam Bohotch's crew. And then a uh, new era for the women's basketball program under new head coach Trent May. Should be exciting to see and to, to be a part of that. So we encourage you to come out to the Sawyer Center, but if you're unable to, to do so and support in person, Certainly encourage you to uh, listen along these airwaves. As again, we'll we'll have all home games for both men and women. I'll be on the call for all of those, and uh, Sports Information Director James Hill will be on the call for uh, the road games this year. So we've got you covered uh, for all basketball games this season, right here on uh, the SNU live stream, and we look forward to to bringing that action to you. So again, your final score from SNU Football Stadium. Crimson Storm 35, Swasu Bulldogs 23. For Landry Franks, I'm Luke McConnell. Thank you very much and have a great day.